doing anything. Oh, it says live. Let's see. Um, on the actual YouTube page, and it's still blank. Ah, there we go. Oh, wait. It's, it has an ad now. <laughs> Finally. Okay, maybe I should pull it up on my other computer so I can actually see the freaking chats. That would be that would be helpful. <laughs> this is always like a five computer job to see all this shit when I set it up. I have windows everywhere for this one thing. Yeah, I have like 20 chats. Uh, <laughs> always like a okay. four. Well, wow. We're live and we're just like randomly. All over the place. Sorry. Huh. Okay, so hi guys. Um... This is our, I should keep count, I don't know what number this is, but this is our live show for May's book, which was Guilty Pleasures by Laurel K. Hamilton, which was so 90s, it fucking hurt. <laughs> oh. oh, there we go. Um, I don't see the chat though, but maybe I'm crazy. Oh. No, I can't see it either. Okay, so I'm not crazy. Damn it, it's always something. I don't know. They keep changing things on YouTube. They so do. Every time we figure out how to do it, they change it. And I call my so surprise starting earlier. Okay. Um. So, what are your general thoughts about the book while I try and fix this freaking chat bullshit? Um, uh, oh, you go ahead, Amanda. You can stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I gave it like four out of five stars. I don't remember because I read it a few weeks ago, but um, I liked it. It was like, not all of it is super 90s, but like a lot of it is very 90s. <laughs> like the girl had a beeper. Yeah, like, <laughs> like that kind of stuff wasn't bad. I think I found it was with more of her speech. And I was like, please stop, please stop. <laughs> uh, I gave it like 3.5. I'm learning the more, like the further I get into like paranormal romance and urban fantasy, I'm learning that that first book more of a setup than anything it's like it gives you a little bit of plot but it's like trying to set you up for the rest of the series so i enjoyed it it wasn't like my favorite but it was like one of my favorites of the ones we've read so far this year i thought the the jean claude thing was gonna go farther in book one yes I loved it. It does. well he did spend most of his time like in, in a, a coffin <laughs> So it'd be hard to get much going on. <laughs> I was in like the last five percent of the book. Like, really, he's just gonna stay there the whole time? Damn it! <laughs> and he kept just popping up in her dreams, and she was just like, "Oh, well, what was that? That was weird." But I'm gonna ignore it because you know that can't actually be happening. It was better than the uh, first grave on the left or right or whatever, yes. where she's like, <laughs> yeah. "Oh, the guy's in my dream. I'm gonna bang him immediately." <laughs> <laughs> so. Or he's passed out. So let me like make out with him while he's yeah. uh was he dead? Well, I don't think he was dead, but pretty close to it at that point. Yeah, Man, I'm trying to she break no chill. She had no chill whatsoever. I don't know though, like with um Anita, sometimes I feel like she was all over the place. Like she would say one thing and then later she'd say another thing. Like she didn't feel consistent, or maybe I'm just being picky. Like what was um. it? Um she seemed conflicted a bit. She was a little all over the place. She, I mean, she consistently thought vampires were creeps, and they were. Yeah. But um, she was kind of like, but should I kill them or should I not kill them? She was very kind of wishy-washy. She's like, are they, are they bad enough to kill or are they just bad enough just for me to be bitter about it? <laughs> yeah. Um, what was it? It was, it was something else, and I, I think I noticed it. Um, more towards the end with like her and Edward, like Edward wasn't consistent either. Like he'd be like damn near a serial killer in one moment and she was scared of him. And then the next minute he'd just be like cracking whack jokes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, but I'm also like uber picky, like hashtag persnickety as fuck. So maybe I'll just... <laughs> It was also kind of weird for me because I was listening to the audiobook, and I promise all of these audiobooks are I don't know what it is. This one, did anybody else listen to it? I did. It has like weird sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> like, dun, dun, dun. Like, <laughs> oh or whenever, um, what was the, the main vampire, the little girl, every time she would like start floating, they'd be like, Ooh. I'm like, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, okay so now I need to listen to it because that sounds hilarious. They throw in little like, ooh, here's like a spooky sound effect. <laughs> right. And it's not the first one that I've listened to that's like that, but some of them are more subtle, so I didn't notice it right away. I was just like, oh, it's some. I had my headphones on, so I was just like, it's something going on around me, and I was like, wait, no, that's the actual audio book. So it was a little weird for some of those little parts. And uh, when I messaged you about uh, you guys about the rat wear part, their voices on that, I was just laughing the entire time, and I was yeah. like, I know it's supposed to be creepy, but the way this person is voicing them, it's just hilarious. It's like demented Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't know if you want to listen to it more or less. Like I'm super intrigued. So now I feel it like- just make, It makes it seem more 90s. Oh, like man. the the narration is, it's extra 90s. I got like such hardcore Buffy, not, just the 90s aspect of it though because like i think buffy was more badass than india is but they would just say something and i would just like see buffy like saying that same shit and that same like very corny like 90s high school it was hilarious but then like after the third i think it was like the third or fourth like will the real slim shady please stand up bullshit i was like please stop <laughs> <laughs> it was just like put out i know it was in the 90s but like let me see the publication date. It was like 93. 93? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I was one depending on when it actually came out. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it was, Nita was this weird mix of like super 90s and then she sounded country as fuck. I don't know what all the novels were about, but. Yes. <laughs> stop. God dang it. Okay, did you get the chat figured out? Because if not, I think we should do like a hashtag on Twitter or something for people who have questions or comments. Yeah, I think we're going to need to do a hashtag because it's not letting me edit it and I don't know why. Yeah, it's not. I guess they could just put like regular comments on it because Shauna commented like regular. Yeah. Hey, Shauna, thank you for commenting because we're like experiencing chat difficulties. <laughs> Literally every month, YouTube tweaks something. It's like, oh, remember how we used to do it this way? Now you have to go and change this setting. It's every month, it's like one little thing. I know. I'm horrified for next month when I'm hosting. I'm going to be like, I don't know anything. <laughs> I was at this computer at eight. I was like, you're not going to get me this time. <laughs> and it's distracting me and I can't focus because I want to fix it. Right. <laughs> um, Shauna did ask, are you guys planning on reading the entire series? Um, I don't know. <laughs> like, this one wasn't so amazing that I'm like, oh, I need to rush out and get book two. But um, literally every time I say I'm reading it for this book club, my one number one comment back was that, oh my gosh, it's complete porn later on in the series. That is what everyone says. So it's like, <laughs> I'm curious to find out how pornographic it is. So I almost just want to pick up a late book in the series just to see, yeah. you know? So there's like something I remember hearing about where she's like, there's like a threesome or a bigger group. I don't know, that happens a lot in her other series, but this series I'm curious because I think there's this other like pseudo love interest that steps in. So I think it's like her and Jean-Claude and then her and one of the wares. I don't think we've met him yet, but. Also, the other part of me is like, oh, there, it's like 27, 29. No, I can't with these yeah. novels and this one. I'm curious to see how it aged because she's actively writing them right now. So the last book is like a year or two old. So I want to compare like Anita from 93 to like Anita from 2018. And hopefully she stopped with a lot of the like little. <laughs> I'm just yeah. curious to see how that evolved. But also, yeah. 27 books of that sounds painful. I mean, is the books. Like chronologically, is that book happening in modern time or is it still in the 90s? Like, is she like writing as yeah, if uh, Nita is still I'm in the 90s? Find out. Like, um, it would be crazy as hell if like the characters aged with like as she's writing the books because it, it, so that's why I'm like curious to see if she kept writing it and it's like based when she started writing it and like maybe 10 years have passed or if she kept it consistent, in which case that'd be kind of odd because she's supposed to age like Jean Claude now, right? So. Oh, she is? I think yeah, I it was kind of hinted at that she was on that process of getting there. Yeah. And that was at the very the very first step. And I think he was like, he went to step two, which was whatever that weird shit was with the blue fire. 
and, and maybe then, with the step three, it's step three, and what's a step four? Like trying to make her <laughs> drink his blood. And I was like, what happened to three? Y'all just <laughs> bases and shit. Hold on. I am kind of frustrated with it though because I was curious because, like you said, I thought something was going to happen with John Claude pretty early on, but we went like the entire book with nothing really happening with him. And then I was just like, okay. So I went and looked at the descriptions of the books. And I think it wasn't until like book eight where something was mentioned with him in the description. So I was just like, is it going to be a case of, okay, she's going to fight it until then? Cause it was just like, she's dating other people according to the descriptions in the other books, but yeah. nothing with him. So I was just like, Oh, okay. I don't know how I feel about that being dragged out for like seven books. If that's the case though, that'd make her thus far like the only urban fantasy heroine that I've met that like stuck to her guns when she was like, nah, fuck you, you're manipulative. I'm not going to do it. Like usually by book three, everybody else is like, it's not that bad. It's nine books later. She's still like, no, fuck off. I also found like there was a lot of like random exposition that the author had. Like she would bring up stuff necessary and not explain it but then like anita would do something stupid and it'd be something not having to shit to do with anything and oh yeah my shoelaces anyway i bought these shoelaces at target four months ago and kind of curly, you know, like you know, what the hell was that for it's like not related to shit and i just kept like yanking me out of the story because i would see her i don't know what it was, it was pretty late in the book i think what she did it on the way to the graveyard with edward and then she just would start like expanding and explaining like a little dinky random detail that didn't have shit to do with shit. And then she just glazed over all this other important shit. So like with the animators, is she able to raise zombies? Like, was she born that way? Do you, can you just practice and learn being an animator like voodoo or is it like a religious thing? Like they didn't explain it, didn't bring it up, but we know all type of shit about just random stuff that don't have nothing to do with nothing, which was weird to me. No. Yeah. That was one of the things that was really confusing because there was kind of explained about how the vampires came to be about, but that was kind of glossed over too. But the whole animated thing, cause she's just like, well, this person taught me, but it wasn't like, is it, like you said, is it something that you have to be born with and able to be able to learn how to do it? Or if you can, anybody can do it. Yeah. I don't know, I was interested in the voodoo part of it know if like it's supposed to be like that because you find out later or if it was like i'll figure it out and put it in a later book eh, whatever <laughs> guys there's vampires in there so we have bigger problems right <laughs> <laughs> and people killing vampires so that trumps everything yeah yeah i'm also mad at myself because i didn't figure out who it was like that was so blatant and I oh just, yeah i guess like, <laughs> i didn't guess it even a little bit and then when i found out i was like well, fuck, I feel stupid. Yeah, I got a little suspicious when he started, like, beating on the zombie and he was getting all mad at her for asking questions. And it was just like, okay, but, you know, you're trying to get to the bottom of it. And he was kind of just like, oh, well, this is my thing. Now let me do it the way I want to do it. So Yeah, I, I, mm, what, was also, <laughs> what was the other thing with, um, Nicholas, Nicholas, what, I, what the fuck? I don't even know. Nicholas or the the child vampire. Who, oh, by the way, every time I um saw her, I kept picturing um chick from Interview with Vampire, a little creepy quote. I couldn't get her out of my head. So every time I, it was a scene with her. That's what I thought of. But she was, a, I mean, I could kind of get her being inconsistent because she's supposed to be like borderline psycho. But for somebody that needed this bitch to help her, she was very, very determined to kill this fucker before she saw yes. her. And I was like, she can't help you if you crack her head open. Like, can you chill out a little bit? Damn. Like, if these rats eat her in the sewer, she can't uh, do what you brought her there to do. Right. Like, she's traumatized because she gets assaulted by a gang of, like, half rat, half men. Like, I don't think she's going to be able to help you much, bro. <laughs> I think that's going to be very efficient. And then it was like later on, it was the first one was Aubrey when he like flung her into the wall. Then after that, she's like, well, I'm determined to break you. And then it was something else after it. And she was just like, she would like get ready to kill her. And then have you saw, have you found out yet, by the way? Uh, no. And I can't, if you keep breaking my arm, bitch. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, they were very much impatient. They were like cats. 
You know, they're just like, no. And then we'd kill the mouse. And it's like, why aren't you playing with me? <laughs> uh, we had a couple more comments. Shauna said, first, six books are vanilla, but the rest are pretty graphic. So pretty much what you were saying, that everyone was telling you in your comment. Yeah, everyone says book seven on, it's just porn. So I'm like, yeah, I think that's my definition what you of with. porn is probably a bit more smuttier than other people's. So I'm like, how smutty is it? Like, well, I was thinking that too. It's like, I read some pretty smutty stuff, but her yeah. stuff just goes out there. I don't think it's necessarily like content wise, it's that bad. I think it's like the circumstances surrounding the content. Like, there's just no holds barred. You're just fucking whoever, whenever, wherever. Like, bitch, are you in church? Look so. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, what else about this book? I thought of something, then I forgot it. Wait, uh, <laughs> uh, this is skipping on me. Sorry. No said someone else commented. Said the first book I'd read with the strong. Uh, this is the first book I read with the strong female character. It was innovative for its time, and that was from Blue Blossom 06. And that's fair. I feel like it yeah. was. I was early like, 90s, definitely. Yeah. I also feel like it wasn't. I enjoyed the fact that she wasn't like, you know, like Kate Daniels, who somehow managed to fucking bring up every single live show. But she wasn't just like this, like, completely badass character. Like, she would have these moments where she'd be weak or she'd be scared, she'd be upset, and she'd admit it. But I have a problem with the way that they were done. I feel like they were kind of. Um, super super fucking dramatic so like when philip died and she had her little breakdown in the bathroom and it was just like no and all these quotes was like oh, Jesus. <laughs> she oh, was a man. bit dramatic. a little bit but i think maybe if we got to feel more emotion i don't think there was much emotion in it it would just go i went in the bathroom and started throwing things so i didn't like you couldn't really feel i feel like that she was upset or see that she was upset it just kind of looked like you're watching a person walk into the bathroom and have a tantrum. So that's what made it look dramatic because I've seen scenes like that. And then I feel bad for the character. And this one, it didn't come across well for some reason. So I really didn't. So it just ended up looking like she just had a giant fucking tantrum. Just like, calm down. It's fine. Yeah. But I I, she like, connected to Philip so oddly because like when she first met him, she's like, listen, pal, you're doing the full court press and you're not getting in my pants. Like you yeah. can just stop. And he was like sad. That she wasn't like getting like on his dick, and he was just like, "Man, I'm sad." And she's like, "Well, I feel bad for you. Like, you're still cute." And I was like, "This is an odd like growth of their relationship," and I feel like you know, like I get it. Like she felt bad for him, and it was more like, "Oh, you poor lost puppy. I want to take care of you." And just, I don't know. I didn't feel like they had enough time to establish a strong connection. Uh, most of it was about him trying to fuck her, kind of half heartedly. <laughs> Uh, I, I get what you're saying, but I also think it came in when she found out that what happened to him when he was younger and yeah. that kind of led to where he is now. So she was just like, OK, um, what are, I'm thinking about somebody else who had a really what was the angel book? She had like a really Did traumatic you know, thing. Elena from Guild Hunter series. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like almost kind of like that. I don't know if she has some past trauma. Like I know she has thing with the vampire, but she ends up. Okay, maybe not get into too many spoilers, but yeah. you know, she kind of deals with that whole situation. So I don't know if it has anything to do with that or if she has like any past childhood trauma like the guy had, but I think that's kind of why she kind of latched onto him and she's just like, well, this is my little puppy. I need to take care of him. Yeah, yeah it was like a little lost puppy relationship. <laughs> it was, it was so sad. Poor little guy, poor Philip. Poor Phil. Yeah, I was just like, out of everybody, he had to die. Did he like he could have been like the nice best friend on the side. Yeah, yeah. he, he could have gone to rehab and turned right. his life around, but no, <laughs> murder. <laughs> <laughs> For shame, Jesus. Um. Okay, I give up. I have not figured out the people are yeah been, like it flat out said like it's supposed oh. to be automatically enabled and it just did you. You read that comment. Baby, I just read Amanda. that comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Anita apparently has sex with a wear while he was in an animal form. Someone just commented. Yeah, I've, I've heard that before. I, I read that and I was like, like what animal? Like what animal was it? I'm now I want to know the animal. 
Please yeah, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, but I'm like, what what was it? Please I don't. hope it's not the rat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Literally anything but the rat. Anything but the rat. Or but like, like animal form, work. does that mean they were like completely an animal or were they like the the were rats where they're still kind of like people sized, but with like rat features? Like, was it like a werewolf that was like person sized with wolf features or was it just a fucking wolf? <laughs> like, <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Please, please respond with more details. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm scared to find out. Like I want to Google it, but then I'm like, mm, no. Okay, hold on. There, this thing is driving me crazy. I just yeah, everyone's asking about the chat. I'm so sorry, guys. We don't know what happened to the chat. It's just not working today. Yeah, it said um, it's supposed to be an automatic thing, so they don't give me a way to turn it on. There's only a way to turn it off. I'm like, well, that's bullshit. Yeah, so we're just kind of like just leaving regular comments, and we're just reading them as they come along. So sorry, guys. Uh, we're you know making lemon or lemonade out of lemons, not yeah. lemons out of lemonade. That'd be that'd be alchemy. <laughs> and I literally like have my laptop in my lap right now, trying to fix this chat. And YouTube's like, it's automatically there. I'm like, but it's not. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why. Okay. It's just every month. It's something with freaking it, YouTube. It really is. Um, okay, so. Guilty pleasures. One thing that I did enjoy about it was that it was scary vampires. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't like, oh, I'm misunderstood and tormented. I just need your magic vagina to save me. It was just, <laughs> they were like, no, 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 no. We're going to like eat and murder people all the time. We're scary, <laughs> which I appreciated. Because there's so many just like, oh, I'm, I'm sad. Mm, I'm sad, but I drink blood. All right, back to, to the. Vicious. Quickly back to the animal form. She said it was like full transformation. Uh, okay, but what animal? <laughs> a leopard. A leopard. Like I'm, I, I want to know it all. I'm like we, we've gone down this rabbit hole. Hopefully it's not. It's a, rabbit. a leopard. No, no, it's a leopard. I don't know if my oh, staff is picking it up. Yeah. Uh, I keep freezing over here. I don't know. A leopard is, I mean, there really, is there any, can you even say that that's better than a rat? Because either way, it's still fucking gross, but like, at least it's not the rat. I, well, I think like a leopard is a sexier animal. Like if I had a pick. <laughs> but like, like, I feel like that's a weird though. thing I just thought about for myself. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fuck a leopard or a rat if I had I a pick. It's a giant cat. <laughs> I just, yeah, like, if I had to pick between a rat and a leopard, like, like pick the leopard. Marston books is why I don't know why everybody likes them because some of these animals are just so like unsexy in general. Like the badger series, and I'm like badgers though, like <laughs> the honey badgers. Yeah. I haven't read it just because they're honey badgers. <laughs> honey badgers. I've seen a lot of them lately. They have like rabbits and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is fun about a were rabbit? That's not what. Why? I think they should all be predator animals. I, like you can't I, be like a prey animal. But badgers are supposedly predators too, but like, no, badgers, like, why? I want like bears, lions, cougars, like giant apex predator animals. <laughs> oh, you know what I want to see? I had this idea once and no one's written it to my knowledge. If someone has, please comment or let me know. Um, I want to see like a stag shifter. Like he turns into a big stag and he's like a, like a gruff mountain man who's a vegetarian because stags are vegetarian. And I just, I want to see that. <laughs> so bad like a gruff vegetarian stag <laughs> there are they come out around christmas these um reindeer <laughs> oh reindeer? my goodness <laughs> i don't know the fuck they display no one of them was reindeer and they were flying over and he felt his mate so he passed out crashed down to earth and like the mountains i'm like what the fuck am i reading <laughs> Wait, like Santa? Like is that Santa thing? Or just yeah, like and it was funny. I'm like, this feels so wrong. I oh my gosh, what story? I I want to read it now for Christmas. <laughs> it's still on my laptop. Some oh no, not on my laptop because I had to reset my laptop. So it's on my hard drive somewhere where all my Kindle backup stuff is. So when I find out what title it was, I'll send it to you. Okay. Okay. But it's oh. that might be our Christmas pick. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> Tell you, man, Kindle Unlimited has some crazy shit on it. Yeah, they do. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. 
Ugh. Okay. It's Fox a Jaguar. I'm not over it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Uber or whatever the hell it was. Oh, uh. that, that like that's too much. It, it's a, it's a smidge. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> like full transformation into an animal. That's gross. Like if he's halfway, like I've seen it before, where I, I wouldn't be as bothered because he still has human parts, but yeah. like no human parts. It's like mm, yeah. no, 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 no. Don't fuck animals. Like <laughs> I didn't think we had to tell everybody that. <laughs> like half shifted, it kind of like edges into Beauty and the Beast territory, which is still weird, but not as bad. I think. Yeah. The animal is just, nah, I can't. <laughs> which, I mean, I believe that happens in Black Leopard, Red Wolf, which is one of the many things I was just like, oh, fuck, this book is draining. You had such a video about that, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I think of that book, my energy level just. <laughs> so there's a lull here. I got to show everyone this hat I bought, just in case. You guys haven't seen it. It does say Trollop. I'm very proud of it. And I wanted to wear it because this is like my 90s outfit for my 90s book. That I would be it. totally radical. So for part it. of this chat, I feel like I should like take advantage. <laughs> <laughs> so what else about Anita Blake, everybody? I was surprised there was no smut in this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I thought someone would be fucking because everyone says how much fucking is in this and they're like, there wasn't. Yeah, I expected something, especially when we got like such that weird scene with the rats earlier. It's like, there's got to be something coming up later. Nope, nothing. Okay. Nope. Just like creepy, rapey rat. Yeah. <laughs> and that one weird scene at the end with Philip where Nicola, Nicholas, whatever the hell her name was, was like threatening to either sleep with him in front of Anita or make Anita sleep with him. She's like, your choice. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Her whole character was just like really weird for me. She was just like, oh, I'm gonna be overly sexual, but she was like a child. I was just like, oh yeah, I that get you're a thousand years old, but yeah, mm. like they talked about her like half formed boobs like too often. Yeah, yeah, especially like, where she made her little human servant drink from like, her uh, thirteen year old boobs. Come, come, bite my boob, dude. And I was like, eh, no, maybe not. I know you're not really thirteen because you're like ancient, but like, eh, I don't need to see thirteen year old boobs. Thank you very much. Jeez. This is like a series of things you shouldn't have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you do. Like, don't fuck animals. Don't like suck on thirteen year old titties. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have to say that. <laughs> oh man! I swear, guys, this is just hot cocoa, but it had a lot of sugar in it. Like, <laughs> what, is, what is this? It's Swedish hard cider. It's pretty good, actually. Not that alcoholic, though. So bummer. It's non-alcoholic. It's only like four point five percent, and I'm low key a wine. Oh, yeah, it says juice. Yeah, pretty much. But, like, I feel it's appropriate for, like, a morning drink if you're going to drink in the morning. <laughs> you shouldn't break out, like, the bourbon right away. Yeah. I can't wait until I go back to night shift because I'm, like, right at, like, since I get home from work, I'm, like, I'm having a bourbon. People are like, are you drinking? I'm, like, it's 8 p.m. for me. Okay, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's one of those random ass moments I was talking about. So, when um, Anita and Edward we're going back to um, Circus of the Damned with the Rat King. And they just had this really random moment for no fucking reason where she said something about how the cave wasn't wet. And he was like, it's dead cave. And then he, she explained it. And she's like, I don't understand. He said, well, a live cave is water and blah, 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 blah. And a dead cave doesn't have this. And then he's like, more than you wanted to know, huh? And then it just went on. Like, that was like three paragraphs of bullshit we didn't. Why? <laughs> I think it was a fun fact the author found out. She's like, oh, well. Right. <laughs> There's like no slick way to put it in there. So it's just like random conversation. They need something to talk about. There you go. She's like, I love you have a page of like, how this I like to learn random facts from books. <laughs> I don't know. I just think that there are so many of them that it just, it, it just stood out to me. Like, I, I don't know. It just seemed clunky, maybe. I don't, something about it. I was just like, well, that was weird, but all right. And I kept finding myself doing that, going, well, that was weird, but okay. Well, that was okay, whatever. Yeah, I mean, like, the live cave, dead cave thing didn't come into any other part of the story. It was just something they said. Like, it wasn't relevant to something else coming up later. Yeah. I also noticed that. But I appreciate the fact that I, I know that now. 
Yeah. I mean, like, it's <laughs> I didn't know that either. So there's like these also moments, these, also these moments that stood out to me where Anita would be trying to explain something to somebody and then she would just be like, never mind, you won't get it. And then we'll get like her thought process and she was like, well, it's actually this, this, and this, but he wouldn't understand that. I'm like, bitch, that wasn't complicated. Why did you just fucking say that? Just like that, what the fuck? And she did it like several times. So she did it with Philip. I don't remember what it was, but she did it with, hold on, where was it? With Edward talking about, um, what's his name, Jefferson or Jensen, the guy who was like a child abuser and brought his daughter back as a zombie to apologize. Oh yeah. Which was also random and I feel like didn't need to be in there except to show he was a shitty person because she didn't even like lay him back to rest. So that was just in there for no reason, unless he mm-hmm. back later. But what she was trying to explain to Edward why it was important for her to lay that zombie back to rest. And she was just like, well, I just have to do it, whatever. And then her quote was when she was thinking to herself, she's like, she had killed herself to escape him and he brought her back. That was why I was out here in the dark waiting for the Jensen's, not him, but for her. Even though I knew her mind was gone, I wanted her in the ground and out of peace. But I couldn't explain that to Edward, so I didn't try. Why the fuck not? That sounded pretty fucking straightforward. Why? Why? And there was like a lot of little moments like that. I was like, that wasn't deep, nor was it complicated. You really could have just said that. It's fine. <laughs> Or I'm picking, you know, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to find <laughs> new comments. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a lot of books, though. It's always like that forced miscommunication thing. Yeah. Just, like, there's no point saying it. I'm like, there's always a point to saying it. Yeah. Like, say shit. Or like, I'm not saying shit. Uh, problems. Or if it had legit been something complicated, I like it better. It's where it's just like. You could have tried to make him understand, but I can see where he would think that's dumb. So if he, she would have, it would have been something silly. She's like, I can't explain why I wanted to. I just wanted to. But it wasn't even that she didn't know herself. It was just, I didn't want to fucking say it. Mm-hmm. So it was weird. And that came up quite a bit to where, like, I started screenshotting them so I could know wh- where it was so I could bring it up in the live shows. It's like, okay. It's been, like, three days and I'm still noticing this. Like, this, this is a lot. <laughs> But I do appreciate that it was a really fucking quick read. So like the first time I sat down and read it, I got up to 70%. And then this morning I finished like the last 30% in like an hour. It was a super fast read. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's really short. I think it's mm. like, yeah, it's 266 pages. Like mm-hmm. you could read this in an afternoon. Yeah. Well, believe mine version was. This is 266 pages. Mm. So they get bigger. I don't have any for Vampire Hunter not Um. Working. Uh, I have a bunch of them because I got them at a library book sale. So I got like pretty much the whole series for like a dollar. Nice. So like, ah, I didn't invest a lot of money here, but um, they get thicker as they go on. Yeah. Because of all of the smut, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> she gets pretty liberal with the smut. <laughs> it's like, let's just throw on some sex. I need to break the other parts up a little bit. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's just more like, wait, I have no reason <laughs> to keep doing this shit. So let's just start throwing sex in here. Oh, that was another thing. The fucking for somebody that is like a vampire hunter by trade, she is so fucking squeamish. <laughs> like Jesus Christ, like it's not a bad thing, but it'd be over like little stupid shit to the extent of where I'm like, you 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 steak motherfuckers in the heart for a living. Why are you vomiting right now? Maybe she just does that all the time. <laughs> like her thing. <laughs> I don't know. That's an unfortunate job side effect. I know. <laughs> all in a day's work. <laughs> unfortunate. Okay. Favorite moment in the book, like right in the beginning. Probably not the favorite, but it literally made me just cackle out loud really, really loudly. When she and her stupid ass friend, that friend was an idiot. And the friends uh, oh. friend from work at the the bachelorette party, where they go to what the fuck was it? Guilty pleasures. They learn. <laughs> they're like, "Welcome to the world's only vampire strip club." <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny to me, but I legit ugly laughed deep from my soul. Like, oh my god, that was so funny to me for some reason. Is it both genders though? Like, or is it just all male strippers? Because we only saw the male strippers. They didn't really pay attention after Philip. It was kind of just like, oh, I got called in. I need to go check out this dead body. Yeah. And then left her friend with a friend who she already didn't trust. 
I was like, you know what? I mean, but I'm just going to leave you in this strip club full of vampires who have already taken an interest in you and your dumbass friend who is already like a vampire, like, in the like pretty much. I'm going to leave you here with this bitch I don't trust. And both of y'all <laughs> and act very surprised when I come back and this hoe is on stage being mesmerized. What do you think was going to happen? <laughs> Damn it. Is that the, the rest thing. of the series, though? Because she was in this book for like, Five seconds. I don't that know. She was on a business trip when she brought her up again in this book, and they killed Aubrey. So I'm assuming she's coming back because Anita only has like two friends. So <laughs> I don't know. But I really did want to see the other lady get like her heart ripped out. Not necessarily her heart ripped out, but I just wanted to see her scare the fuck out of her a little more. Yeah. She can get her heart ripped out. A lot of people got dismembered. So I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's not out of the out of the realm of possibility of things that could happen. Hot mess. Um, <laughs> let's see, what's the, what's your favorite part? Do you have a favorite part? Um, think... Go ahead. I need to think for a minute. <laughs> I just, that was so funny. They were like taunting, like, we're not going to kill you, but we were sent to mess with you until she's ready for you. So I was just laughing that entire time. When I, I got to that part, I was like, you know, um, when somebody says just wanted them to mess with you a little bit, that usually doesn't include group rape. So that was a bit extreme. <laughs> Did you think I was just going to get up and walk away and go, OK, I'll find your murderer for you? <laughs> book is really dramatic not in a bad way though like i enjoyed it and i i read it almost in one sitting but so much of it i was just like oh my god what the hell it didn't age well i feel like because i've read books of like really old i've read books from like the 80s and the 90s and probably the 70s because i read a lot of historical romances and you can't really unless you unless they have like problematic content you really can't tell with some of them that they're old like with tessa dare's book i feel like I can read Tessa Dare's book 10 or 15 years from now and I, I won't be able to go, oh, that was really old. It was written in, you know, this time. So like the book can be about the 90s and not sound so dated. I just, for some particular reason, this one for me, it just didn't seem like it aged well. Mm. Well, I think it was written as a contemporary. So, you know, it was contemporary to that time period. And when you're not in the time period anymore, it feels yeah. like it. I don't know, parts of it did feel like a little bit, like it could be any time. It's just like, yeah. when she's like, oh no, they beeped me. I need to call the office. Where's a pay phone? It's like, girl. So like, there was like a lot of little things in there that like could happen in no other time period. Yeah. You know, besides like the nineties or earlier. So there were certain things, but parts of it, um, like even the clothes. Okay. She wore pantyhose and it bothered me. That's like a stupid thing to get bothered by when she went to like the strip club in the beginning. She's like, Oh, I'm wearing this dress and my pantyhose. And she called it pantyhose. And I was like, you are so fucking nineties. Oh my gosh. Maybe it's because it was in first person. Cause I feel like even with like her actions to me, it's kind of like, I can read a book that was written about the seventies and the person's putting on like tie dye and bell bottoms and whatever the fuck else. And like hemp, rope belts and shit. It really won't bother me. But it was something about the way she was talking and that I just feel like she just threw a lot of additional references in there. So that also made me really paranoid because I'm trying to write right now. I'm like, they don't put any references from like cultural shit. We take those the fuck out because they date your stuff really badly. Yeah. I think if you're gonna date yourself, you should like full on date yourself. Yeah. Like you're saying like the bell bottoms and the hemp rope and everything yeah. like that. Like if you're going to be like in the seventies, be fully in the seventies. And this is supposed to be in the nineties, but doesn't reference enough stuff from the nineties. Yeah. So the things that are totally nineties to like stick out because it is written to be not necessarily in the nineties. Like a lot of it's just like general things that could happen now or happened in the nineties. But then the 90s references. <laughs> I don't know. I think some of it is that I feel like I'm reading it as a book that was written now. Because this is what kills me about it. It feels like a book that was written like last year. And somebody's going, what are some like 90s things? I only know like three things. Oh, pantyhose. Bitches don't wear pantyhose anymore. But I'm like, <laughs> actually wrote it in the 90s. So maybe it's just like bad luck that those things just stand out the way they do. Because right now they're not like little subtle things. Where like as a kid that was born in 89, I go, oh, I remember that. That was dope. Now it's just like, mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bad luck, but it was just those particular things. Because I'm like, it was published in '93, so maybe it was written in like '88, '89, '90. And it was just like, just so happened to be the bad luck that it was those 
blatantly obvious things that just got axed out later. And it's like, oh, whoops, sorry, bud. Maybe they wonder about their hair. Mm. What does Anita's hair look like? You remember '90s, early '90s hair? Like, it, she looks like fucking Saved by the Bell, Kelly. Like, I'm just, <laughs> what does your hair look like now? Now I'm like, I'm going down a rabbit hole in my brain because I know, like, um, I'm forgetting his name, the Stripper Boy, uh -huh. <laughs> Philip, Philip, because he had like a ponytail. Did he? I missed that. He, they yeah, said they had like a ponytail at one point, oh, and I'm like, no, 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 that's not sexy no more. I remember <laughs> his like, mesh shirt. Like, I remember his mesh shirt when they went to the party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only thing that stands out to me out of like all the outfits in this book was the fucking um, the penguin shirt and the long shorts. <laughs> yeah. It is such a grandpa outfit. <laughs> <laughs> she did like her penguins. I think that is like, what's a quirk she can have? Oh, penguins. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with the 90s thing. It just felt like I, I need something to fill this gap. What can I put in here? So maybe it didn't, it wasn't written that way, but it just comes off that way. So it's kind of unfortunate. But also I'm hypercritical, probably. So I think I do want to read the second one, but I don't know, because I don't like a lot of back and forth of like the, okay, are you going to get with this person? Or are you going to get with this person? That's one of the reasons I didn't finish the, um, uh, Jane Yellow Rock series because that fucker vacillated between love interests until book nine. It was eight or nine. So I read like book two, she had to make up her mind. I skimmed book three, she had to make up her mind. I went on Goodreads because you know people in those gifts will spoil the fuck out of everything. And it wasn't until like book fucking eight or nine, I was like, oh fuck this shit. <laughs> so I don't know, like, but I don't think um, Anita ever has like a steady. Either they end up in like a, a multi partnership or an open relationship, or she just doesn't have a steady. She goes back and forth. So like, I don't know if I want to do twenty six books of that. Yeah, yeah, that that I can handle it for like three books, and then I'm like, no, because I think three is about where everybody has their character get the shit together. Because people get impatient. I don't want to be still reading book six and book seven, and this whole ain't made her mind up yet. <laughs> That's, it. that's too slow burn yeah yeah is that even <laughs> slow burn anymore that's just i don't know what that is it's gotta be something else this is like we have turned the stove off that bitch ain't even warm <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one comment i wanted to read how do you ladies oh this is from the tiny tea set how do you ladies think this start to the series compares to other urban fantasy vampire romance Ooh, I it like. Says, uh, she thought there was a lot of unnecessary characters and pages worth of pointless detail. Yes, yes, I I definitely feel that. It it, it like it was just the little random things, like with the cave. Like one or two of those would have been cool, but there's just a lot of random exposition about absolutely nothing. I'm like, for this to already be a short book, maybe that's why I stood out so much because already we didn't get a lot of the detail, and the detail we did get wasn't relevant to anything. But that being said, like it wasn't, I wasn't hate reading it. Like it wasn't a bad book. It was just weird, maybe. I don't know. I've, I've it's it's higher up there out of all the first books I've read. Like it, it didn't suck. Yeah, like I enjoyed it. Um, have I read uh, more fun vampire romance? Arguably, yes. Yeah. You know, I've had more fun with other series that have vampires in it. But um, for what it is. And that is so established. Like, obviously, it's a popular series. It's still going now. You know, almost, you know, uh, like, almost 30 years. Yeah. So people like it, obviously. And I don't know. Like, I, I've read things that I personally thought were more fun than this one. But I do appreciate it for what it was. Because I feel like in the early 90s, that was, like, Interview with the Vampire era. Yeah. And all those type of vampires. So, like having these ones who are like legitimately scary vampires, rather than like you know, interview with the vampire and Brad Pitt being you know broody. <laughs> like I, I, I do appreciate it that she went with like a darker story. So, yeah. Really kind of right I want to see her relationship. Well, I don't know if she's gonna have one or not. But like, why I kind of wanted her to get with. Um... Jean Paul, Jean Luc, Jean Claude. Jean Claude. Jean -Claude. <laughs> so Jean -Claude. I keep thinking Jean Claude Van Damme, and I'm just like, oh god. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I, I lost it. Jean, Jean Paul, Luc, Pierre. What the fuck? <laughs> just yeah, I kept calling him Jean Paul when I was reading it. So. <laughs> but it, um, I like kind of wanted to see her get with him only because, like, 
these weren't your typical or what's typical now, like your Edward Cullens. I don't actually kill people though. Like I drink and send them on their merry way and give them orange juice and some vitamin C and some hot <laughs> pills and we, no. We don't get those kind of vampires in this book. So I really actually appreciated that. But I think, I don't know if she ends up more with shifters or not. Like I'm curious to see that. But I also know how badly like the plot disintegrates when she starts descending into porn territory. And like, at least give me like lady porn, damn it. Give me some plot with my smut. I don't need that smut. I need a little bit of plot. Yeah, we didn't I know why so. they're fucking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was that was my thing about it. I enjoyed the plot part of it for first book wise, but the romance was basically non-existent. They was just like, yeah, I know you want me, but let me go be locked in the coffin for the rest of this book so we can't actually interact with each other so I was just like I appreciated it for the plot points for everything else outside of the romance I guess basically well like if you read her other series so in the the Mary the Meredith Gentry series um the main character Mary is she's some of like private eye a detective but she's also like a, a um fake princess so she is like one of her relatives is the leader of the the unseedly court. The other one is the leader of the seedly court, and they're fighting over her for some reason. But it ends up like the aunt is trying to control her one way, and the uncle is trying to like sleep with her and get her pregnant so that she has to come back to that court. And then it just turns into basically like we less plot and more people just wanting to screw her. Like, like Brandon and I's faces were the same. We're just like. I, it gets weird, I'm telling you. And then as you get later in the book, so she kind of is a little like Feyre in that she turns into like the monster collector. So she gets all of these like dark fae that everybody's scared of as her bodyguards. And then slowly but surely she starts to sleep with all of them. And then it just turns into reasons that she has to fuck all of her bodyguards and there's no plot. So it goes from like, we're, we have a, a book with a plot and it's a little smutty to just like, ding dong, oh, it's the pool man and the pizza boy. Well, clearly I have to sleep with you both because the fuck just happened? Wait a minute. What the fuck? There's no plot anymore. It's just like so then she ends up pregnant with twins. It's just like six or seven bodyguards and like all of them are the father. And I'm like, okay, you're doing so fucking much right now. Wow. Lord K. Hamilton gets some weird shit going. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> wow. It, it, it gets a little strange. So when that started happening, I think it was like book three of that series. And then like the the all of that plot kind of disappeared into the background and then it just kind of turned into like, oh, by the way, like we need our hands on these kids because they're like the next leaders, kings, queens, what the fuck ever. But also like we still all want to sleep with you for like little stupid ass reasons. And then like the most extensive the plot got after that was like her favorite bodyguard lover disappeared and they're trying to figure out what happened to him. It's like, mm. I mean, she's got five more to choose from. <laughs> Hashtag it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really good in the beginning which is why i stuck with it but like after like the fourth book of just smut i was like clearly this is not gonna reverse itself so china said anita was such a prude in the beginning was she oh she clearly got over that quick fucking animals and stuff. <laughs> um someone also asked what kind of book are you writing um shit which one writing <laughs> like i can't <laughs> my attention span sucks so i'll work on something and get stuck and then i'll work on something else so i have like um a high fantasy with all well not all but with uh people of color is like the main two characters and then i have um an urban fantasy that's futuristic and then i'm working on like two contemporary romances inside of that but like there's like three books in each of these categories I have like nine fucking open works in progress right now ridiculous i've been feeling so unmotivated i haven't written since like those first three days and then i ran my last year so <sighs> random bits of motivation and then i go into like writing mode so i I think i read like three books last month and i wrote like sixty two thousand words but those sixty two thousand words are like i wrote and then i um started it over and then i started it over again so it's not like 60,000 consistent words, but I, ha I my problem is like, I always have to tweak the beginning because I need the groundwork good. So I can't just write and then go back and change the beginning. I have to write and I'm like, no, I don't like the beginning. And then I'll start over and then I'll start over and then I'll start over. So I'm writing like everything right now, <laughs> but it all has romance in it. So I always like, I'm a big romance buff. So I start with the romance 
And then I'll go back and I'm like, oh, fuck, this needs a plot, huh? Shit. <laughs> Do you write in order? I think that was my big thing. I got stuck and I knew where I wanted to go next, but I didn't know how to get from one point to the next. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to stop and figure it out. And I never figured it out. Well, I usually, I, I, I started, when I started writing, I didn't write in order, but they got hard because I would write like the big, like climactic scene in the middle or in the end. And then I'd start over and then I'm like, okay, no, well now this doesn't match. And I have to change that scene because I built these characters this way in the scene, they're a different way. So now I started writing in order so I can progress with them, but then I get stuck. Then I'm like, well, I don't want to skip because I don't have to change it all over again. So then I start something else instead. So okay. I just, I'm stuck all the way around. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I think I need to try working on something else. Let's see. Yeah, anyway, back to this book. Sorry. <laughs> um, Shauna said Laurel, I don't know if you read this one already. Laurel gives more details about Anita's gifts in the following books. Um, I'm excited for that, but also like the leopard smut worries me. What book is that? So I can skip it? I think it's like seven. Somebody <laughs> said. I'm not ready. Uh, I'm the not consensus prepared. seems to be book seven on yeah. it takes a turn to porn. <laughs> The thing I read the the summary for one of the it was like book twenty six or book twenty seven and like the, of the book was that um, her friends getting married and like she got some kind of like big enigma whatever that oh life is still difficult even though they're getting married and that was like the plot of the book and it's like what that's it okay so I'm curious to read them but I might like skip around because clearly I'm not gonna miss much if I don't. <laughs> Mm, see. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's like a big overarching storyline. They might just kind of be all like, you know, monster of the week. Yeah, which I mean isn't bad because, um, well, actually, nope, never mind. I was going to say uh, Cheryl Kenyon's book, Cheryl, Cheryl Lynn Kenyon's books are like that. That's a lie. They have like a big overarching plot and you get kind of confused if you skip around a little bit. But I like the books that have like the monster of the week thing that are like, episodic and then they still have like the overarching one that pops up later. Yeah, yeah those are my favorite. Okay, oh, yeah. let's see. That the I just saw the, the wear in animal form comment and I can't like let that shit go and bother me. <laughs> I couldn't either. I was like, what animal? Tell me everything. <laughs> You can't just say like that happens and not explain it. <laughs> I was totally ready for Smut though. Like I read this book also for Smutathon, which the last day is today, and this is the only book I finished. I'm like, there wasn't even any smut. Well, what the fuck? There was like mm. great smut, like violent, assaulty stuff, but no like smut. Like, well, that's yeah. whack. It's smut adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's hinted at <laughs> not even adjacent. It's like, oh, it might be something happening soon, but yeah. I mean, it looks like a smutty book. Yeah. It's got a screw on the title, not the title, the cover. You know, like, oh, screwing. even uh, uh, the cover the that pod. I had, it's like a, somebody's body on like it. Like a torso. It's like a lady's body. Yeah. There are like four covers for this first book. So there's like that one. And then there's also the purple one, where it's just like the naked torso with like some weird snake skin kind of thing going on. And then there's the one with the lips. And I think there's another one also. There's a lot. It has many different printings. Yeah. Which, and there's a graphic novel, which I'm scared to read. Really? Of the later books? I think all of them. So there's like, she's fucking an animal and cutting? <laughs> <laughs> they actually have like smutty uh, comics I've seen people talking about online. So. Yeah, I've read some, but like not with people fucking animals. Oh, well, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I just finished the other series and at least like he transformed into human. Well, nothing actually happened in those books, but you know, it was hinted that eventually it was going to happen. So, yeah, I don't know. Really, that yeah, partially transformed. Like I could still like get over it because you still have like human parts. But like, mm -mm. It's just like, no, I'm into this sexy beast right now. Yeah. So, like, this is the cover for one of the graphic novels, which I think is hilarious. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of the later ones for Circus of the Damned. So there are quite a bit of them. They have good titles, though. Yeah. I do appreciate the titles. Her titles are always awesome. But her, yeah. Like Dance Macabre and like, mm -hmm. they're always good. 
So apparently something's gonna happen at Circus of the Damned again because that was another part. That's another thing too. She's like these little weird, very not kitschy necessarily, but they're just like almost kitschy things like the strip club and the circus. And I'm like wondering what the dance macabre one is about now. Like if there's like some horrible ballerina or some shit going on. She just keeps doing stuff like that. Horrible ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> Ballerina, ba uh, ballerina. Let's see. Yeah, there are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You've read this one, Lauren, right? Yeah, yeah. Creepy ghost ballerina. Yeah. So there's a precedent. <laughs> I was looking at that one though, and it was not bad. I mean, it was. A this is the first romance I ever read. What? This is the first romance, like romance novel I ever read. That's and my friend gave it to me. She's like. Amanda, you need to read this. A ghost and a vampire do it. And I was like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, first one I ever read right there. I cannot remember the first one I ever read. When I was a kid, I used to sneak my mom's books when she wasn't looking. And she just mostly read Harlequins and historical romance novels. So that's what I started with. And then I didn't get into paranormal romance until I think I was in high school. But I had already been reading romance novels since like third grade because I have no chill. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. I read weird stuff in high school. Like I was really into Chuck Palahniuk. Mm -hmm. So like I read Fight Club and Choke and all of his books, which are like demented. That says a lot about me, maybe. <laughs> just just really it. weird, demented stuff. Let's see. What is it? No, I think the only like the only age appropriate books I read as a kid were like the the um I read a lot of the Merlin books by T.A. Barron, and then I read the uh, pretty much anything uh, May Cabot put out, like the Princess Diaries books and the Boy Next Door books. Other than that, I was reading smut. Like, I was in high school reading <laughs> Bane's books, and I remember my soccer coach saw one. She was like, you reading that nasty old lady's books? I'm like, hey, leave me alone. Because <laughs> I took my smut book to soccer practice, because why the fuck not? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't start reading smutty stuff until college. Yeah, and I think that's why I have such a hard time now. I'm getting like burned out because I'm reading shit for like 20 years at this point. I'm, like, I'm running out of material here, guys. <laughs> there is a certain like level of recycledness. Like yeah. it's hard to find something that's really original. Yeah. So it's not really about finding something original. It's just finding something that's entertaining. Yeah. You know? I did really like though when the smuttier books were more towards uh, the paranormal ones, or more towards like um, Anne Rice and less uh, Twilight. When Twilight came out, oh my god, the vampire books got so fucking bad, and I'm low key still salty about that. I'm never gonna let that go. Like every time I pick up like this like little kitschy, dinky vampire romance, I blame Stephanie Meyer and get mad all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like Twilight. Like, I know it's funny to hate on it. I liked it. I enjoyed it very much when I was reading it. Does it have problems? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, you know, it's an international mega success for a reason. Yeah, because teenagers like it. <laughs> I, I read it as an adult. Like, I, I have no shame about it. <laughs> but, like, I enjoyed it quite a bit when I was reading it. Have I, I read better things since? Yeah. Yeah. But I enjoyed it for what it was. I didn't get into the books until the first movie came out, so I'm not sure when that was. But I was like, oh, what's this? And my sister was like, it's books. I was like, oh. But at this point, my sister had already, she was reading the uh, Anita Blake series, and I was reading the Mary Gentry series. So when Twilight came out, I was like, these vampires are whack as fuck. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> so I think it was because I was already, like, contaminated. I already had, like, was reading this kind that like you had read better stuff already. Yeah, right. I was into like the darker vampires. So when we got to it's like, okay, they don't, you know, drink from people. That's fine. Wait a minute, motherfucker, a sparkling. No, no, no. <laughs> they could have handled it better. Like I get what they're trying to say. It's just like they're like frozen, so they're like kind of made of crystal, and that's why they're like glittery. But like you could have got like a little better descriptive adjectives besides glitter. Because, like, you wrote that and you know people are going to make fun of you. <laughs> There's no way no one's not going to make fun of it. It's not. I'm just like, I don't see how nobody went. Are you sure? Stephanie, sparkling, are you sure? Okay. <laughs> All right, bitch. All right. I mean, it, it worked for the time. I, I enjoyed it when I read it. I don't know. Even as a kid, I was like, wait a minute, sparkling. And I know my sister was in the other room. She's like, I told you. <laughs> She warned me. I was like, no, but it looks really cool. Everybody at school likes it. She's like, all right. 
I remember reading it with my friend. It was like a buddy read type of situation too. And I remember we were grown ass adults and we went to like the midnight release of book four. Yeah. I remember thinking, I'm like, I feel like I should be here with a child. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can say like, it's for my niece. I was like, oh, whatever, fuck it. I'm going with my friend. We were grown adults. I'm like, I could buy alcohol. <laughs> Maybe I should have watched it drunk. That might have helped. I think nah, the first, not that first movie. Probably because I oh god, the first one was so bad. Okay, so first the fuck of all, at least in the first one, she didn't have that ratchet ass wig on. <laughs> but I don't but, know what was with like the blue tint and the lighting, but it got so fucking annoying. It was so weird. Like it was very cool tone. This weird filter they had on there. And it's like it was. Certain scenes was okay, but it was over like the whole fucking movie. And then I ignored it. And for some reason I felt like the person who liked who played Rosalie, I didn't feel like she fit very well. But that was just me nitpicking. But then after um Kristen did that, was it that Joan Jet movie where she cut her hair and then she came back and had this trifling ass wig on? I was like, You could get a better wig at the beauty supply store. What the fuck are you doing? No, why? It was so bad. Yeah, it was it was rather thick. I was just like, <laughs> she's got a lot of hair. Like, good for her. <laughs> her wig was shit. Rosalie's uh, wig was shit. Esme's wig was shit. Alice's wig looked like a fucking bathroom robe. It yeah. was like up off of her head like this. I'm just like, girl, y'all cast a lady need her ass. <laughs> this is bullshit. Yeah, the first movie, the production value was a little off. Like their makeup looked bad. They looked like corpse paint. Like, yeah. like, paint. Like, like, even they're pale. Someone paint you like a wall. Like <laughs> <laughs> your faces were like coated. And that weird little like, so this way that it was supposed to look like they were float running, especially in, like the baseball scene and they would just be like this and like, <laughs> like no, please stop. <laughs> you can't make the baseball seem sexy. Like, <laughs> you can't do it. Can't. Just, just stop trying. <laughs> oh, I'm probably pissed about 12 people off. Let me see if I got any thumbs down because I'm talking shit about Twilight. <laughs> Sorry. Everyone talks shit about Twilight. It can oh handle it. They made millions of dollars. They're I, good. I, like, I watched all of them. So, like, clearly I didn't hate them that bad, but shit. Ooh. I wish the yeah. comments came up for me. Are, is everyone else's comments like an all out of chronological order? Like I had to search for yeah, them. Yeah. I, I'm, um, I'm not getting alerts for them or anything. So I'm sitting here with my laptop just I just constantly. refreshed, yeah. Yeah, I have my phone and I keep closing it and open it back up. Yeah, this is a segment where we get off topic in every live show. So. We do that. If we talked about the video a up. fair amount. Not the video. The, yeah, no. Her yeah. first graphic novel for the Anita Blake series at Comic Con, and she remembers the the surrounded by rats scene. I would like to see that in a comic. Like, I just wanted to see how weird it is. <laughs> <coughs> ah, I knew it. So Shauna says, "Dance Macabre is a uh, Dance Macabre is a, a BDSM nightclub." I'm ready for it. I need it. Give me. Okay. Fine. Book. What book is that? I'm skipping straight. I'm looking like I have. I don't. I'm skipping straight to that fucking book. They're on my top shelf. I can't see them, but they're up there. So like, I am low key obsessed with BDSM books, except for um, Fifty Shades of Bullshit and Fuck Your Safe Word. That book is trash. But like the rest of them that are done really well, I fucking love those books. So I'm I'm curious to see what she does with it because that lady gets a little weird. So I want to see if this is like, I don't know. I'm curious. I'm probably gonna regret it. I'm, Did I'm, you? Did you read the BDSM series from Cresley Cole? Yes. The the players. Um, yeah. yeah. That like, makes Fifty Shades look cute. It, I really liked it, though. <laughs> I did, too. I enjoyed it. It gave me one of my favorite things that like I say to this day. Um, in book one, I forget their names, but she's like, ABC, always be crazier. <laughs> and like I have said that so many times since. And it's like a fun game I play with my boyfriend sometimes when we're out in public. Yeah. Who's going to be crazier? It's usually me. That's funny. <laughs> I win. <laughs> I love those. I was scared to read them for the longest time because usually when I find that people write paranormal romance, like when they switch over to contemporary, it's just something like missing. But those, I really fucking love those books. I think I read all of them in like a day and a half. I didn't really like the last one though. Was that the one with the... The, the, the youngest brother who was like, uh, had the sexual abuse as a kid? Oh shit. And the con woman? The con, I like that one. 
I know, but like he was such a fucking creep and like stalked her. He was like, like they both kind of the fuck out of each other. So I feel like she was super shitty to him too. So for some reason I feel like well both of y'all are fucked up, so just be fucked up together. It's fine. No, it just I don't know. That one I didn't like as much, but I like the the first two quite a bit. I think that one was my favorite, if I remember right. I don't know. I did also like the one with the where was it she was filling in as an escort for her sister, her best friend or something. It was like yeah. I don't have somebody skinny and blonde and you you're Hispanic with a big butt. What the fuck? Oh yeah, that's a book too. But I, I I remember like she was like she had a bunch of money, but her husband was trying to steal it, so she had to run away. And she's like pretending to be a maid. Yeah, and then yeah, she the maid. She got end up being an escort for her friend in her friend's place. Or so I don't know what the hell, but I like them. They were I, think a, I think there's two different series. Is the escort Maybe. one? I might be. I do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyway, so we're off topic again. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm finally seeing all these. Um, comments like Shauna said that she's in a polyamorous relationship later on but she makes a choice i'm like i figured it was something where she was switching back and forth between multiple people and then gene says the mystery element drops off later on so plot goes away and then we just have anita in a polyamorous relationship and then she apparently makes a choice so yeah i'm gonna Sorry. open a second little wet week i was off i was off mic for a second what are we talking about again um, I was reading through the comments and I saw how um, um, Shauna answered my question about Anita, where she says that Anita was actually in a polyamorous rela relationship later, but hmm. she makes a choice after that. And then um, Jean said that the mystery element does drop off later on. So I was like, oh, so yeah, the plot goes away and then we just have her in like a multi people relationship and then maybe she picks one. This relationship drama mm -hmm. with paranormal creatures. And then knowing knowing what her series, her other series does is going to be like ma mainly just fucking drama. It's not even going to be like in depth drama. It's just going to be like you fucked him longer than you fucked me. What the hell? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through my hat phases. Like every once in a while, I'm like, I need to wear my hat for this video. I would. I, mean, I want to be a hat person so bad, but I have a really big head. Yeah, my I have a really small head. head. I have the opposite problem. I feel like hats look giant on me. See, I always um, I have a big head, and then I like the fitted ones that don't have the the strap in the back, but they're always so bulky up in here, and my head is already long this way because I have a really long forehead that they just make me look like Homer Simpson. Look, this really <laughs> I can't. I went through like a fedora phase in high school where I just wanted to wear fedoras all the time. I don't know what the fuck that was about. <laughs> I'm strange. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I just like I love this hat, so I'm just I wanted to feature it today. So I'm just being, <laughs> I'm just like look at my hat, guys. It's an awesome hat. It does say trollop. I was very I was very impressed with it. <laughs> um, yes, what else? Um, we can talk about our next book a little bit. Dark fever. Dark fever. Let's do it. I'm, we I'm, haven't really read it because I don't think any of us have read this yet, <laughs> unless someone's doing a reread. I've read it. It'll be a reread for me, but I like it. Um, okay, because I know it's like Faye, and I think it's like Irish. Yeah, yeah, I think. So. And I've always heard good things about it. It is good though. There's a little bit of a questionable. Um, the love interest Barons is kind of a dick, and not like a fun dick, like has breakers, <laughs> like an ass wipe. A fun dick. Ooh. Yeah, fun dick. <laughs> I love fun dick. Stop. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he's a little. I didn't like him much because he's not like just a little angry but he's still a good person he's just kind of just flat out an ass white i'm like okay mm -hmm. and there's like this thing later it's like a really it's not even questionable consent it's just like straight up fucked up that happens in one of the uh later books yeah and well it, i mean a lot of guys are dicks though in these books like they always start off as like dicks yeah so but, like, it's not of, like off-putting yet yeah but it's oh, like yeah, okay. there's a character who's an asshole like how Jean Claude is doing shit that she doesn't want him to do, like with the making her attached to him against her will and blah blah blah. This guy is just literally an asshole, like in, in an unattractive way. He's an asshole. A lot of people like Barons with the Jericho Barons, Jacob Jericho, J whatever the fuck. He, I, I did not like him. Like I had a really hard time with him. He's so like secretive and cut off. But I don't know. We'll we'll. See, and I'll be interested to see how I feel about it because it's been a couple years since I read it. I think I read it when I first started book two, so it's been like two, three years at this point. Question for everybody 
So from all of the books we've read this year, has anyone continued on with any of the series? Is? Ooh. So far, I haven't. Not yet. I had plans to, but my TBRs have been like ridiculous. So I, have I haven't actually read some. So with like the Jane Yellow Rock series. I skimmed book two and book three and found out they don't get this shit together until book eight. And then I skimmed book eight and was like, I'm still wasting my time. Fuck this. Um, <laughs> with the yeah. books, I read books two and three and I need to finish the series because she's still writing them. I think, what was another one? The very first one, Storm, no, Lightning something. Fuck, uh, the Rebecca Ronhorse book. With, Rail of Lightning or something? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it just came out for that and I brought it from the library and I had it so long they revoked the digital copy so I have to get it again. But I'm dying to read that one. That book is so fucking good. Oh my God. Are we, uh, were you planning on doing that for a read for this group? Because I don't think that's smutty at uh, all. It's not. It's just urban fantasy. It's urban fantasy, but it didn't have any romance. Oh, I didn't realize. I know it kind of hinted at sort of at the end of that first book, but yeah i don't know i have it i need to pick that one up it is so freaking good so good and the first one ended with a pretty it's not like a cliffhanger but it ended up with shit kind of fucked up so i'm like ready for the second one but mm -hmm. i'm getting to this like new like habit within the last like year year and a half or like the more i'm anticipating a book the longer it takes me to pick it up just because i'm scared it's gonna fucking suck and i'll be so disappointed so i haven't read it yet but the covers of both of them are dope, and they're yeah, really sitting on my shelf waiting. I don't yeah. even have it. I just brought it from the library. I need to get it. So fun. <laughs> uh, what else did we read this year? I don't know. I think I'd want to continue on with the Angel series. Yeah, that's really, the one I I'm like most book, interested in. Book Sorry. one completed mm -hmm. itself enough that, like, if I didn't continue on, I wouldn't feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, you know, it feels like a whole story. But so that's it, why I haven't like rushed to pick up book two. It continues on pretty good with the um the romance aspect because being that she uh what happened to her at the end of the first book happened, they have to kind of work with that and with that constant like him trying to control her because he's he used to controlling everybody. And I like the fact that that doesn't go away. So it's like constantly a thing that they're working on is gradually getting better, and it's not just like a magic fix. So that's what like got me from like book two into book three. But yeah. what's what's another one? Oh, the Chicago Land Vampire series. I did not read further in those because um Merritt and what's his bitch got on my nerves so very badly. It gets better. Like I I read like the first five or six books of that series and I need to finish it. But like I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't Yeah, they have the audiobooks on the Audible Romance package, so Last year, when I took a week off, I got through like the first half or so of the series. So if I get the week off again for my birthday this year, then I'm going to finish that. Uh oh, you keep freezing. Oh, OK. Don't worry about it. My internet is sucky. You just caught like the last bit of it. I was saying I read the first half of the series last year when I got the week off for my birthday because uh, the Audible Romance Package has, I think, all the audiobooks for the series. Mm -hmm. And if I get the week off again this year, I'm probably going to finish it all. So we'll see, because I want to get to the spinoff of that oh, one. Oh, the spinoff is so fucking good. It is so good. So I got an okay. article for the first one. Oh, shit. Like, that's what made me go back and want to read the other ones. But mm. I just, Merritt and What's-His-Face, just it's not even Merritt. It's just, like, him. He annoyed the fuck out of me. It was, like, the second book or the third book where, like, they were going to get together. And he was like, but you would be more used with this guy. So why don't you go ahead and date him? Because I need to end to figure out what he's like. No, no. Yeah, they're both stupid about each other for a while. And then mm -hmm. they get together. And then you like them together. I don't know. I've only read the first six books. But some shit goes down. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I kind of, like, a lot of people say the Jane Yellow Rock series gets better, too. But that character is, like. I can't. Literally <laughs> like a fucking cat in heat. And the fact oh, that one? I couldn't finish it. I read the first four chapters. It was just like, I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I think, was that one of your first picks when you had first started the book club? At the same time we did uh, Trail of Lightning. So I didn't intentionally pick like two books with Native American characters, but like Trail of Lightning was like here. And then Jane Yellow Rock was like on the floor in the basement. And the, 
Yeah, the thing about it was that the plot would have been fine if it wasn't her character was terrible. And I just like I can't do it because of her character. And she just like literally just wanted to sleep with everybody and it wasn't even in like a fun way. Cause I, I've read books with characters like that, because Carrie Arthur's characters tend to be like that. They're kind of non-discriminatory in who they sleep with, and she's like, whatever. I didn't get used to it in the first book. And it's just like every time I see a character, it's like a potential, oh, you know, they're hot, they could get it, but that's it. Like <laughs> This character is like literally a fucking cat and heat. Like she is trying to climb every damn thing, everybody. She don't give a shit. I'm like, okay, that's that's really extra. As soon as she meets a character, the cat in her is like potential mate, potential mate. We fucking okay. No, that's not cute. She's like that cat outside your window at one a.m. Yeah, howling. It's like no one wants to fuck you. Stop. <laughs> Yowling with her ass in the air. Yep, that's her. That's her. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. And I know some people, like, I know Mistress of Reads, um, their channel, um, she commented and she's like, it gets better. It gets way better. But I just couldn't do it. And then I'm also, because I read most of my, I don't read books without romance in them. So, like, I need, like, my romances, if it's going to be a series, like, I need them to, like, get their shit together and then go on with the rest of the series. Like, they didn't get it together until, like, book eight. And I'm pretty sure there's only, like, 13 books so far. And I'm like, uh, nope. Can't do it. Uh -uh. And then the person that she picked was like, that's really weird, but okay, I guess. There was just nothing <laughs> keeping me interested in that series. I was like, I'm not watching you like try to hump random ass people for 11 books. That doesn't sound fun to me. I don't even remember the plot. All I remember is that she just acted like a straight up cat and he like, that's it. So for sure the Guild Hunter series though, I want to go, I need to finish. I'm curious to finish um, the Grim Reaper thingy just because I know it gets crazy. It, I'm like two books away from finishing it. No, I think I got up to book nine and there are 13 now, but I need to I need to finish them. But I'm scared to because after I reread them, I disliked it so much this time compared to the first read, read through. I was like, I don't know if I can do this for eight books again. I am super lagging, I think. Yeah, no, I was just not talking because I was like trying to see if there's any new comments. <laughs> um, I don't know what else about this book because we got off topic a lot. <laughs> Guilty pleasures, guys. Um, Let's see, any final thoughts about Guilty Pleasures? I don't know. I just like for a book I didn't dislike. I have like a, I had just had a lot of little stupid complaints. Like none of them were huge. They're just a lot. They're just little things that rub me the wrong way. Kind of like with the way she described the the black characters. They were all super tropey and stereotypical. I was like, oh, fuck. The ones that, you know, didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, I liked it. I think if I had read this early on in my, like, paranormal romance reading, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, towards the beginning of when I started reading this stuff, I would have like been super into it, like more so than I am now. Because yeah. I've read other things that I know I like better. Mm. But I mean, it was fun. I, I understand why it's very popular. Like I do appreciate that there were scary vampires. They make some questionable sex choices. We found that out. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I don't know, I thought it was fun. It was um, interesting. Although one thing I haven't brought up yet, at one point in the story, I wish I had tabbed it in my book, but I forgot. There's like a mention, they mentioned it several times that Anita is very small. Mm -hmm. As a person, she's short. Yeah. And she, I think at one point she said she weighs like 110 pounds. Yeah. And it was like, how are you not broken like a toothpick because you were made of toothpicks? Yeah. Like there's no way that she is physically capable of grappling with vampires and not be dead yet. <laughs> like, there's no way. She has no, like, superhuman strength or any other abilities besides she can, like, talk to dead people and, like, raise them up. She can make zombies. Cool. That doesn't make you physically stronger. And, like, she's getting knocked into walls. Yeah. She is getting bit all the time. Like, how has she not, like, been murdered? Like, forever. <laughs> and brought she brought that up quite a lot. Because I remember thinking, I was like, all right, you're short and you're tiny. You fucking get it. Gee, like, she mentioned it, like, quite a few times. Like, yeah. Okay. So that was, like, weird. I'm like, no, you should be maybe a sturdier person. Yeah. Because of, like, the, the, the action you're getting into. 
I don't think you would be physically capable of doing. So that kind of like, it would throw me out of the story when every time she mentioned how short she was, I'm like, okay, you could be short maybe, but like, no, you can't be short and like willowy in grapple with vampires. I feel like that's going to come up weirdly in later books, like weird sex situations. Cause I just know like the shit that I've written her other books. I'm like, this is going to get strange and I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, anything. <laughs> You'll find a way to make it strange and sexy <laughs> and you're going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's what, what she's, she's good at doing that. It's like, I think that her books are the first ones that I've read that had group sex. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Sorry, my boyfriend was in the room. I was talking to him for a second. <laughs> <laughs> He's being sneaky. So I, he does make a lot of noise. <laughs> um, do we have any ideas for books for... Well, I know what we're reading for this month, but what about next month? I have so many picks, and I'm, like, not the one who has to, like, worry. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I know what I'm picking for July already. <laughs> yeah, I just, I have books that I really want people to read. So, like, I really want people to read um, the Immortals After Dark series. I really want people to read the Dark Hunter series. Yeah. But the problem is that they're so long. It's not, like, a series where people can read, like, three books and catch up to where we're at because each of these books are, like, I think the Mortal of the Dark are like book 19, I think, and the Sherilyn yeah. Kenyon series are like 27. I wish, I wish Cressley was still writing them faster. Like, mm -hmm. I know she got hurt and like she's been taking such a long extended break. Like, I feel like, I don't know if she's ever going to finish them. Meanwhile, Sherilyn Kenyon has like all these books. And if you go to Goodreads, there's like three books come out one year, like 19 books coming out next year. And it's like, she's fuck. <laughs> I know. He just does a lot. So I'm going to grab my book for July. I'm just going to show you guys because I already know what I'm picking. Hold on. All right. Oh, meanwhile, I haven't made up my mind yet. Mm. Yeah, I don't know because I'm trying to find stuff that's smutty, but my book stuff is like, I don't know. I don't have enough good picks. Yeah. I mean, and I, I for some reason, I like all of the ones I've read, like urban fantasy is the only genre on my shelves. So, like, I don't have any unread books. So, like, I want to pick some, but I'm like, I've read these already, but it's not the point. <laughs> this is going to be my July pick. Oh, that looks good. Polaris okay, Rising, okay. which I didn't know was a romance. I oh. went to the Ripped Bodice and they had it on the shelf. I'm like, is this a romance? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I already wanted to read it. It's um, sci-fi. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Night Chaser, honestly. Ooh. But um, I think it might be a little better than Night Chaser. I don't Ooh, know. So, but, um, yes. Hell yes. Yeah, so Polaris Rising is going to be my July pick. I already know. And it's blurred by Alona Andrews, who I never see blurb shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the same book. Can we just put it in there twice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could. It's all three picks or just Polaris Rising. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's see what else. I might put up um see I don't I don't want to put up books that I haven't read yet because there are other books previous. So like I really want to read the second uh Trail of Lightning book, but everybody hasn't read the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about J.R. Ward books. So maybe I'll put a Presley Cole horror show. <laughs> sorry, like, oh I God. hate J.R. Ward. I'm so sorry. Like, I just, I would just rant the whole video if I have to read one. <laughs> I read, like, so many of them. So, like, I got so into one of them that I, I bought a fuck ton of her books. But the only one that I really liked was Zadis' book. The other ones, I'm just like, okay, these are really long and really drawn out. And I'm kind of bored. Like, I've tried. I've mm -hmm. tried with her. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've tried the vampire series and I didn't really like it, but I wasn't like angry with it. I was just like, okay, like it's not my favorite thing, whatever. Yeah. And then like literally the book I hate with the fire of a thousand suns is a J.R. Ward book. Like every time I see it in a bookstore, I will turn it around. Like that's how much I fucking hate it. <laughs> like, the Bourbon Kings. Oh, I haven't read that yet. Cause a lot don't read it. It's talk. fucking vile and disgusting. And I hate it so much. Like I don't believe in burning books, but I would burn that motherfucker. Like I hate it. <laughs> a lot of people say that about that one. I looked at it and it didn't look good to me. It didn't look intriguing. It is fucking vile. Oh. Vile is the only word I can describe. Oh. Just the content. Not like, oh, it's bad and I hate it. The content in the book, oh. the story is fucking vile. Like, I, I didn't even finish it. I got to 60% after, like, a graphic rape scene. No. That I was like, nope, I'm done. And it wasn't even handled well. It wasn't handled like, oh, this is horrible. This is like, ooh, look how dramatic this is. Are you, like, scared? It was, like, very much, like, for titillation. Uh, it was like, fuck you, J.R. Warren. You need to go to the corner and think about what you did. <laughs> like, I was so angry. <laughs> okay. Well, 
<laughs> that one is definitely off the. I think I actually bought that one and unhauled it without even reading it. So I I can't with it. I'm glad I bought it at the library book sale. So I only spent fifty cents and I like threw it away. I literally threw it away in the garbage. <laughs> like I hated it that much. No one should have to read it. I can't even donate it. Okay, so maybe then. Um... <laughs> Sorry, that was my J.R. Ward. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> J.R. Ward, we're not doing that. Um... I would read it, and you're just gonna know I'm gonna rant. <laughs> just be aware. <laughs> I'd be having my morning drink with you. I'll have my mimosas. <laughs> I'll get real loose. <laughs> Let's, uh, at some point, maybe I think, well, not maybe, I think we definitely need to read the first book in the Hidden Legacy series, too. Yes! I, I would go do a reread. I have. I've been wanting to reread it. We'll catch up. We'll be back. And that was like a trilogy, so like that's pretty easy to get caught up on, too. Heck yes. Sorry, my dog is like screaming. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, Brandy. <laughs> Just me and you now. I'm looking because um, I saw something. It's the paranormal romance, but I don't know if I would like it or if we would one? like it. Um, the Last Wolf by Maria Vale. I huh. Yeah. I've seen it like floating around on social media. So I don't even think that was the one that I was looking at. It was another one that was also like a wolf shifter i can't talk right now i mean i love good good werewolf porn like give me one any day (laughs) and i haven't read enough of it so i need more in my life (laughs) oh okay sophia said how about kelly armstrong or patricia briggs and you know what i was gonna pick bitten by kelly armstrong for one of my picks too in the future i have only read the first book in that series i think I, i started the second one and for some reason i got distracted but yeah Bitten, especially the show. Oh, bitch! One of these days, we need to do like a book club, like a. a we could do a watch along TV show. Yeah, you could watch it all together and like live MST three K it. Bitten is the shit. I love that. Shit. Yeah, I watched the first season. I was still mad about what happened to the, the only black dude in the in the pack. You know. Yeah, it was kind of shy, dude. I think I only but, saw part yeah. of the first episode. I haven't really seen the show, but I liked the first part. I saw the first episode. Not enough that I found the book at a library book sale and bought it. So <laughs> I have like all of her fucking books over there because I, I watched the show first, but there's such a big like difference between Clay, who was like the main reason I watched the show. I'm not gonna lie. Clay in the show and Clay in the books. Or Clay in the books is like damn near fucking feral. But it's not bad. Like I like both. He's just so very fucking different characterizations in each. Fair enough. I'm down though with totally watching like just do like watch alongs like we did with um um Blackathon and I was watching uh Black Panther and just like live tweeting that shit. We need to just like live tweet. Maybe maybe we'll do bitten. Maybe we'll do a movie. I don't know. We need to do we something. Can do it. I'm down. And then we need to get Brandy more well werewolf smut because this is not acceptable. <laughs> Brandy, did you ever get the book I sent you? I sent you a book. I did. I did. I, did. Oh, okay. I didn't say anything. I'm like, oh I, I put it up in my hall. That's what. That's fine. I'm like, I know I mentioned it somewhere. <laughs> I'll probably find another copy. I'll send it to you, Lauren, but I figure you might already have it. Um, it was All I Want for Christmas is a Vampire or something. <laughs> what? No, but you know what? That sounds like a, um, um, fuck, what's her name? Like Carolyn Sparks, I think. Yeah, that Sorry. sounds like her. I yeah. have a couple of her books. Like, a lot of hers are funny. They're like vampire dentists or dentists and vampires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of random, like, they're very, I got they're, it. I got it at a library book sale, and I realized I already had it. So I was like, "Hey, Brandy, do you want it?" And she's like, "Yeah." So I sent it to her. But they're vampire rom com. They're funny. I would read a vampire rom com. Yeah. You haven't picked like a good rom com yet. Ooh, I have these. I haven't read them yet. See, I knew I was going to end up getting up. Look, y'all, I have on um uh, Mickey Mouse pants. We already saw because you got a. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn. I don't know if how many of you guys have read this, but if you haven't. Made in the Hunters by Talia Hibbert. I read it. Yes. It's a novella and it is so good. But only thing about it, she's planning on making it a full length novel. So if you want to wait till next year, it's going to be a full length thing. But if not. Is that the one with the, the was she a, a werewolf or vampire black female character? She's a werewolf hunter, but she is black. Uh, I've, I've heard about it and I'm going to read it. And I couldn't get into it, I think. The, like the prologue, I was just like, they could have thrown out the prologue. I get why I was there, but it was like from another perspective that's not the main character. Mm-hmm. But I read it and like, 
I'm a slow reader, so like an hour, and it was really good. All right. And I just like again. If you like Talia Hibbert, like if you if you like her writing, it was like her first try into paranormal yeah. romance. And I haven't tried her writing yet. I follow her on Twitter because I think she's fucking hilarious, but I haven't tried any of her books yet. I just keep buying them, kind of like Rebecca was. <laughs> now I've read a bunch of hers. And I like them, but not paranormal romance. But she has a a book about like a sugar baby, sugar daddy relationship. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I'm not gonna like this because well, that's not my thing. And I read it. I was just like, you have changed my mind completely. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this is, but it was amazing. At least the first book. I didn't like the uh, the the second and third one. I didn't like as much, but. So like that first, I have these that Amanda sent me, and this one about the male daddy. Oh my god, it's so good! Yeah, uh, I read that for, one for Mountain Man series. I'm such a trope whore. I fucking love these books. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so I have. Oh, I'm fucking up my shelves. They're stuck together. That's not cute. Um, oh, <laughs> these super tropey, kitschy looking vampire and werewolf rom com. Book. I think I read something from that series before. I haven't yet because I wanted to start at the beginning, but they just look like every so often I find these really good like paranormal rock com books and I fucking love them. They're so cute, but I haven't tried these yet. So if they suck, don't blame me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm like I've like reached the capacity of me being able to breathe through my nose. <laughs> uh, I have. Like, I don't talk about it, but, like, I have really bad allergies. Mm-hmm. And, like, um, oh, you have bad allergies. Like, no, no, no. I have to go get shots. Like, yeah. they're bad. Like, I'm allergic to everything. And I'm allergic to cats, and I have a cat, Uh-oh. which is silly. But, like, I had the cat before I knew I was allergic to cats. <laughs> so I can't get rid of the cat. And um, the cat likes to hang out in my library. So, like, after a while, I'm just, like, dying of, like, cat dander. Oh, I have that problem, but I don't, I still don't know what it is I'm allergic to. So I had like, uh, some people saw it on Twitter, some people didn't, but like last month for like randomly no fucking reason, apparently like my face fucking swelled up, my throat swelled yeah, up. Yeah, I saw that. It swelled up. And they're like, just like, well, take some hydroxyzine. I'm like, well, that would be lovely. Assuming my throat doesn't fucking close and I can swallow it, lady thing. Help. <laughs> so now I'm fighting with them to get like allergy tests and shit done because you know, nobody here, like they don't like to do stuff voluntarily medically anymore. They wait until you damn near die and they're like, okay, now maybe let's check. Like, ugh. anywho, yeah, allergies suck. Yeah, like my allergy test, like I looked like I had remote controls embedded in my arms. Like <laughs> there were so many, like I was allergic to everything. Ouch. Not shellfish, I can eat shellfish. I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat them anyway, but I'm not allergic <laughs> to shellfish. <laughs> like that was about it. But like basically I'm allergic to all grass and trees that grow in North America. Holy fuck. Uh, so I'm like basically allergic to everything in the environment. And like I had this weird nut allergy because I, w- I could eat peanuts, but nothing else. Huh. Like if someone gave me a walnut, like my day would be over. Like, <laughs> like, like my mouth would itch. If I held a walnut in my hand, like the palm of my hand would be so fucking itchy. Like it would just ruin my day. And so he's just like, yeah, you're not actually allergic to nuts. You're allergic to all of the trees they grow on. Wow. And I was allergic to like a lot of fruit too. So it's like, I'm allergic to the tree that oh. the fruit grows on. So there's like a lot of weird things I was allergic to. Apparently like fucking me and nature, I'm an indoor kid. <laughs> that's what that's what I learned. <laughs> yeah, well, at least you don't live in Washington where there's just like 38 ty- kinds of fucking trees like in one parking lot and you just don't know anything. Yeah. So um yeah, but I started getting allergy shots Oof. about like a month ago. So I'm I'm still starting treatment. Yeah. Who Oh, I'm probably right behind you, Hill. Yeah. But mine are I, always- I leveled up because now I'm getting two shots a week. Damn. So one in each arm. So I'm getting a higher dose now. Uh, anyway, so that has nothing to do with books. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me being a snotty kid. I'm excited though, because this so far, like right now, actively watching, there are 31 people. I think that's the most people we've had like actively watching since we started these. Usually there's like 15, 19, 14. So this is pretty fucking cool. I'm I'm Yay. here. For it. They're just all hearing about me having a snotty nose though. <laughs> Let's maybe talk about books. <laughs> We <laughs> talked about books, promise. Yeah. <laughs> Don't leave. It's it's fun. I'm it's fun. Unless you just like to see me suffer. 
<laughs> I'm refreshing to see if somebody commented since my phone. Of course, as soon as I said that, it dropped down to 30. Where'd you go? Let's... And it's like, oh, you knew. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, okay. So Lainey, she says, would you also, would you guys be interested in reading some more Western romances? Hell yeah, I fucking love cowboy yeah, romance. I don't think I've read any, so I'm not opposed I to. haven't really read a cowboy romance. Do they have like a, a cowboy romance that has paranormal elements? Because yes, if so, read, wait, fuck. Uh, that'd be perfect for us. I just read one, wait, it was by Katie Wilde. It was- uh, Oh my gosh, she could turn into a cattle dog. It'd what? be a cowboy who turns into a cattle dog. And he like, <laughs> that's how he like gets his cows, you know? like. Sorry, I'm like writing a book right now though. <laughs> Wild, uh, he could be like a little shifter and he turns into a cattle dog and that's how he like gets his job done and then he's like i'm a man again La. that's hilarious I don't know, where is it it's shit i literally just read one not that long ago and it Wait, was comments guys if you're watching and you know a cowboy paranormal story there you go didn't you read one recently? Oh, yeah, because yeah. I downloaded that because you were talking about it. Moon. It's called High Moon. It's okay. on Kindle Unlimited, right? The I think so. Um, the main character is a cowboy werewolf, and then the female main character is, um, I think she's mixed or she's all black, and they have like these really cool little nuances in there that shows that she did her research because I don't think Katie Wilde is going to color like little things like her smelling like shea butter and all this other stuff that she uses that I just like those little details. It was really good. Like, was it the best paranormal romance I've ever read? No. Was it fuck hot cowboy romance? Hell yeah. I'm here for it. Okay. That could go in like the, like the pile. In the pile. Books we want to read. Yeah. It was dope. And, but it was the first one. So I'm like, I went to go finish the series and they're like, oh, this is it. And it just came out. Damn it. <laughs> Well, we've mentioned three books that we're all interested in. That could, those could be our July picks we've just already picked. We had Polaris Rising, Bitten by Kelly Armstrong, and then High Moon by Katie Wilde. So we'll have more of a chance of like werewolf. I think we've been vampire and fae books lately. Yeah. So those are three. Those could be our July picks. Did we just like pick them? <laughs> oh, cool. Um, Preemptively, those are ideas we had. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm blowing my nose. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's gonna be gross for a second. I can't hold it anymore. <laughs> so here's a little like corny note on the bottom of the synopsis for for high high note. It says, please note this book contains explicit love scenes, plenty of swearing, and a dirty talking cowboy whose response to everything might as well be the better to eat you with, my dear. There's also a little paranormal violence and gore, but no real cows or rabbits or werewolves or haunted in the making. <laughs> it's cute. I liked it a lot. Okay, like, yeah, it has a sense of humor. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. Okay, so there's one. I haven't read, like, a, a paranormal cowboy story. Any cat story, really. I don't really read a lot of cowboy stuff. What? I know. Okay, maybe I'm just, like, a total, like, romance whore, and I just don't even get I read pretty much, like, any type of characters. If you could put them in a romance, I'll, I'll fucking read it. So, like... Like the BDSM stuff, there's like cowboys, there's like any well, job, got any stuff, status, so. I will read all of it. Yeah, you were the first person I ever heard talk about an Amish romance. I was just like, oh, that's I can't different. do Amish. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not something I'm used to, but okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, if I romance in it, I'll try it. Like, seriously. I, I can't do Amish. It's like, oh, I took off her bonnet sexily. Like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's actually no sex in it because it's Amish, but like <laughs> sexy bonnets. Like I can't, I can't yeah, with it. <laughs> so there's one that's that's kind of close, and it's a fan fiction. It's called the Cannabian Betrothal or the Cannabian Proposal. So it's not real Amish. This lady like did a lot of research and made up a community that was similar. So they still use like electronics and stuff, but they can't use, um, they don't watch television. They don't like get exposed to certain things. They're not unnecessarily exposed. So like the females wear long skirts and they're covered up, but it does have smut in it. It's only like two chapters towards the end, but it's still a really good is Twilight fanfic. But anyway, but yeah, the one Bethany sent me, the Beauty and the Beast retelling, that one was actually super cute. Like I don't read a lot of them because they don't get smutty, but, but a lot of the actual stories are pretty cute. Okay. But I, I am really not all that discerning, I swear to God. Like, if it's got two people in, it, in a relationship, like, okay. 
<laughs> like I'll give it a try at least. Yeah, we'll see if I like it because I, I think it's because like I my wheelhouse for so long was historical and paranormal that at the time I read so many that now everybody like, brings up stuff. I'm like, I read that, and if I didn't read it, it's probably because it didn't sound good to me. So I'm like running out of shit to read. So I'm like, is it people fucking in it? Okay, give me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a woman of simple taste. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, like, what do you do when you like exhaust your preferred genre? You gotta start branching out, or you got nothing else to read. Because since like Twilight and Fifty Shades, like the BDSM books and the paranormal romance books are getting really kitschy, really stupid. Nobody's doing research anymore because Kindle Unlimited, you can just publish whatever you want. So the just the market is getting crowded with like bullshit, and it sucks to say that because I will likely be an indie author should I ever finish a fucking book. So <laughs> I don't want to put that out there, but. People are just like writing things really quick, not looking over them or not having any battles looking over them and just publishing them. And it's just like flooding the market. And now it's like affecting people's taste because people are like, oh, these are free. You just have to look over blah, 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 because it's indie. And I don't feel like you should do that. I feel like if you're publishing a thing, you still need to put effort into making sure it's a good product. Yeah, because I read a romance, y'all. It was it was bad. I talked about it and I'm just like, I mean, the romance wasn't bad. It was just like everything else, all the research parts. I ranted in one of my wrap ups because dude got into a car accident and he broke his bone in his thigh and he was up at the hospital walking on it nah, uh, with, with a cane. Nah. I was like, oh, okay. That's how that works now? Oh, nah, okay. you, you do that shit. You have a full on unse unsexy, like hip to knee fucking, you can't move. People got to help you take a dump. Like, that's not cute. Yeah, he was in the shower. No. Taking showers and he was putting swimming trunks on and off. And, you know, he was like, mm, I don't want to wait for this lady to, you know, help me out the bathtub. So I'm going to use the towel rack that's screwed into the wall. Oh, he's like okay. 300 pound police officer. Jesus. I'm like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to use this to get out. And then he got mad because it ripped out the. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love sorry. I think I ruined medical shit for people. I was so mad. I had a friend over yesterday and we binged like the entire season five of uh, Black Mirror. And there was this one episode, it was something medical in it. And I think it, it was the last episode where they had this guy who could feel other people's pain when he was a doctor. So he'd just be doing really questionable shit in the fucking emergency room. And they would just have these patients. And they would go, oh, well he did X, Y, Z and a third. I'm just like, no, no, that's not how you do it. No, fuck. And I think like, my friend was like, it's just TV. I'm like, that's not accurate. And they're like, oh, it's just TV. Calm down. <laughs> like, the shit irritates me. It's like that Maya Banks book where that lady, and I think I've bitched about this several times before, where that lady. We have another live chat, too. Yeah. <laughs> where she swallowed, like, it was it like 50 Tylenol, some shit like that. And then, like, she was in a coma for like two hours. And then she woke up and they discharged from the hospital. I'm like, first the fuck of all, wait a minute, where you want me to start? Because it's like 38 problems. Just right there. <laughs> First of all, you read taste 38 pills crushed up in some fucking hot chocolate, you stupid. Second of all, <laughs> pills do not solve in fucking hot chocolate. You, that would be some gritty, nasty, chunky ass hot chocolate. <laughs> your liver and your kidneys are now fucked. If you take five pounds off a day, you took 38 of them in an hour. You're, you're now peeing blood if you're peeing at all, but you're not getting it. Second of all, they don't, you don't wake up from a coma and five minutes later, the doctor's like, okay, we'll unhook you from everything. You've been to the ER before. You've had like an IV and the doctor's like, nah, ho, we're not taking it out until you're on your way out the door just in case something happened. There is no way you're awake for three seconds. Like, well, we're just going to take these IVs. We're going to take this cardiac monitor off. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me so mad. It's like you could have Googled the effects of too much style and all that. That's a common one. That, that wasn't hard. I, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be right back. Okay. I feel like that medical, like that just, it irks me. And it's just a research thing. It's part of the reason my writing process takes so long. It's because I'll be writing something and I'm like, oh, wait, how does that work? I'll go research it. And then I go off and research. I'm like, okay, I only needed that one tidbit, but I needed that surrounding information to make sure like that was gonna work like that. And people, 
don't do that. And it just drives me crazy. I'm just like, no. Because I even, I was like, let me pause from this book. I was like, maybe it was something that I don't know. I'm like, I broke my ankle and I was in the cast for like at least a couple of weeks before yeah. I could even put a boot on. So I, it was, it was a mess. Everything's a mess. <laughs> but some place like in the middle, like your hip, your thigh. The only thing they can't do it for is a rib. But like when you move, your thigh doesn't move. So it's like your knee, your hip, all that shit has to be immobile. So there's no fucking way you snap the fucking thigh bone, and the doc's like, "All right, bro, be careful when you shower, deuces." The fuck? Yeah, it's like you're gonna go home and automatically you're gonna be taking a shower. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm, yeah. Sorry. Another I, time of going off topic. <laughs> I think we've talked about the book maybe 20 minutes and the rest of the time we're just talking about literally everything. Yeah. Well, so if you have any more thoughts? It, oh, <laughs> go ahead. Any more thoughts, anybody? Uh, I'm really mad the um, fucking things didn't wipe, uh, the comments didn't work, um, the chat that just... Uh, yeah. Yeah, because we had so many people talking to us this time. I know. Okay, so let's see. Delaney said, have you tried any Naomi Lucas? It's basically paranormal romance in space. Just cyborg shifter romances are, in my opinion, good space paranormal romance. I'm scared, too. That scares me. That scares me. Because usually, like, anything I've seen with cyborg romance, because it's not all that marketable, means it's indie. And for that reason, like, you have to shift through so many crappy ones to get to the good ones. And like, I don't like saying that, but... I've yet to read a good cyborg romance, except for um, um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Um, J.E. Parazzi's Malfunction series, but it's more like cyberpunk than it is uh romance. It's romance light compared to what I usually read, but it's really good. Other than that, like a lot of cyborg stuff I've been seeing is really weird. Like I saw this one where this guy had so like the cover of it is like this naked oil chest, but he has tattoos. I mean, he has guns tattooed on his hips, which at first I'm like, hey, that's ghetto as fuck. B, it's like 2035, why the fuck are we still doing that? That's not cute. But he was just like, he would do weird shit. Like he just like was screwing her like with his pistol. I'm like, this is really, really fucking, I can't. I can't. And he screwed her with a pistol? What? Yeah, with a pistol, his pistol. Like, are you saying pistol meaning dick or like an actual pistol? Like an actual <laughs> weapon. He put the weapon in her in her lady business. Yep. No. 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 I don't have any other words besides no. (laughs) Not okay. You don't put that that's no, that's not a holder for things. (laughs) Like, no. (laughs) That just seems uncomfortable for everybody. It's gonna be bad for the gun. You're gonna get goo in it. Like it, it's bad for it's bad for the vagina. It's it's bad for the b- guy putting it in there. Like no one enjoyed that. No one enjoyed it. But like here here is where from a medical standpoint, my thought says like really inappropriate shit because I'm like okay, so that's where you put your weapon. I guarantee you because if you're the kind of person that thinks that's an appropriate place to put a pistol, you are not gonna take it apart and immediately clean it. The next person who gets shot with a thing better fucking hope this hoe ain't got no STDs because that's it. Yeah. <laughs> If you don't die, you got the clap. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot you with stimulus. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. Takes you oh. a long time to die. <laughs> like you might not die now, motherfucker, but I got you anyway. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with your like horrible sores you're about to get. <laughs> It's like uh, what's the face from Ember in the Ashes? I think it was the first book or the second book where she like tries to kill him with a sword, but the sword is poison. She's like, "You might not die now, <laughs> but I still got your ass eventually, motherfucker." <laughs> I'm playing the long game here. <laughs> so that's where my mind always goes. It's kind of like the same thing with watching Black Mirror, where everybody would just like they would just have these little devices to read people's thoughts. So they had this little thing that it looked like a furniture tack and they would like take the tack and stick it like right here. And so it'd be this little thing. We, they just watch them insert it into people's heads and she go from house to house. And I can't even watch the show because I'm like, bitch, I hope you disinfected that first because I don't want herpes in my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. Okay. Horrible thing I found out one day. Uh-huh. You can get herpes in your eye. Yep. And I didn't know like how herpes gets into eyeballs, but it happens. 
because I saw it in a commercial, like a like a herpes medicine commercial. It's like not for herpes simplex of the eye, and I was like, in the eye. Like I, I assume know. you don't put genitals in someone's eye, so maybe you like you touch something and then touch your eye, you know, like pink eye, but like also that, but yeah, that I I, 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 <laughs> I I don't think you guys want me to tell you, so I'm gonna shut up now. Yeah, that's already <laughs> running through my head as I'm going thinking about it. So. Like, people are into weird shit, okay? Stuff gets everywhere. It's pretty much. Oh yeah, I know. Like there's like guys make messes, and yeah. it's like I don't want that in my hair or my face. Right, but, like that happens. But apparently people are into that. And the same people who are into that probably make sure you can't get STDs that way because you can. <laughs> oh, God. We're going down a rabbit hole of, <laughs> of something terrible. Like, <laughs> yeah, turn. Where did we start? How did this start? <laughs> How did we get here? The cyborgs. Sorry, it was the cyborgs. The cyborgs. <laughs> it was the <laughs> I read one cyborg thing and, like, well, she wasn't really a cyborg so much as she was a human. Mm-hmm. That they put cybernetics in, like Cinder, kind of that type. Kind of, of. like um, she basically like they put like stuff in her bones, and um, there's a microchip in her brain, mm-hmm. so she can like yeah, a little bit like Cinder, but like for adults because they fucking it. But um, <laughs> it's it's actually I have it. Best description <laughs> ever. <laughs> it's this one, uh, "Savor Me Slowly" by Gina Showalter. Oh. They make her an assassin, and she's like has cybernetics put into her body, so she gives like superhuman strength. Here you go. Okay, Mishka Lies was created to be an undercover operative. Literally, her beautiful body has been mechanically augmented to give her superhuman strength. Strength she's going to need. So <laughs> so tacky written. Okay, so basically, this is about aliens. It's like an alien hunter series in the future. So aliens live on Earth, and then there's like this um, organization that polices them because not all aliens are super cool with people. Hmm. So um, she is like an assassin that they built. Like they genetically modified her from like an embryo. Yeah. So they're like, oh, well, you would need to be quick and be able to squeeze through small spaces. So even though having big boobs would make you sexier. We need to have sporty boobs. So they like designed her so she'd have like smaller boobs, but like cute ones. So they basically designed her and they <laughs> put like cybernetics in her body. Cause they, they, she makes a comment about it. She's like, they went one time, they wanted her boobs to be bigger, but then they thought like she needed to be more athletic. So they made them smaller. Yeah, it was like a comment she makes in there. But um, so she's kind of like cyborgy a little bit. Gina Showwatcher's books have been like touch and go for me. Sometimes I'll pick up a one and I love it. The so new I'm ones are bad. Do it into it, and then the new ones are just god fucking awful. Like that space Viking shit. It's like, what was it? Um, Shadow and Ice. Yeah, girl. Those are the stupidest characters I've seen in quite a while. We're in like some weird Iceland place. I don't know. We don't know anything. And ooh, is this a tourist attraction? This random ass cave with no fucking people in it. Yeah, if it's a tourist attraction. Oh, you wouldn't be fucking lost. There'd be people. <laughs> oh my gosh, I book it. Oh, it upset me. Hear you guys talk about that. I just crack up. I know. And I just have it sitting on my shelf. Like I probably won't pick that up now. <laughs> it, it was painful. I'm telling you. Like even if you suspend disbelief and you allow a lot of shit, it still fucking sucks. <laughs> You can't suspend enough belief. You can't. For it to make sense. <laughs> okay. So there's like okay. a point where like he was holding her hostage and she's like, I have to get back to my sister because my sister's an addict and if she don't get her opiates, she's going to fucking die. And he was like, tough shit, bro. And then she's like, dude, I want to fucking... Wait a minute, what? No. I know, she has to keep it safe. Oh, wait, no, I don't like you. You're kidnapped me. I'm like, you shouldn't have to keep reminding yourself. You're still kidnapped. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. My sister might die because of him, but, bro, he is kind of hot. Like, bitch, no. No. Like, girl, like, you saw a guy you encased in ice who you thought was a mannequin, and you're like, hey. And I'm like, stop trying to fuck the attractions. Like, <laughs> she yeah. had a lot of problems. Anyway, anyway, so books, books. Um, <laughs> next pleasures. Month. <laughs> next month book. You guys hold it up. Next month is Dark Fever. For, guess, for everyone watching month. who doesn't know, we're going to read reading Dark Fever by Karen Marie Monning. It's Monning, right? Is how you say her yeah. last name? I don't know. Everybody. I don't, like it. it's like, I don't want to say moaning. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, you know, I don't want to say that always. So I'm going to say Monning. But um, <laughs> it is Faye. It's Irish. There is a murder mystery in it, I believe. So it's kind of getting into like Celtic mythology. And I don't think we've read a book with like Celtic mythology yet. 
No, I don't think so. So that should be kind of interesting. At least it's like a little different, I guess. But um, also, like I had to Google the pronunciation for a lot of words. And yeah, there are like a lot of odd vowel placement and too many consonants. So you're just like. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of like Celtic. Um, what's the thing? The other whatever. I can't remember the name of the actual freaking language. But there are a lot of like Irish words in it that are Gaelic. There are a lot of Gaelic. Think words in it that are. I might try to get this on audiobook just because they'll pronounce it for me. Yeah. And I can like write notes about how to like pronounce things. Yeah. Like that one, like the C S I D H E, that's pronounced like actually she. Oh, there. she? She, yes. I always, I always said Sid. I, I always said Sid or Siddy. Nope. She. Yeah, that was like reading Trail of Lightning. I was just like, I'm lost. Yeah, on how to say yeah. anything. Or like eventually, you just stop trying to figure it out. You just like skim over the word enough to recognize what it means, right? <laughs> what oh. it's supposed to be for. Yeah. I start nicknaming characters, frankly, at certain points. <laughs> like, I, like, uh, okay, so I read "Wicked Saints" by Emily Duncan, and I have a rant review on my channel in oh, case anyone Lord. wants to see a rant. Sorry, it is about to start storming here. Oh no. Hold on, let me like close my window because I have like sun and I'm on the first floor and I don't want people looking in if they're outside. Okay, okay for sure. So I have this thing and I'm scared to read it now because like oh my gosh. Like, like it's rare that you hate things. So when you hate things, I'm like, I don't want to read it. And like I went into it thinking this is like an anticipated read. Like I'm gonna love it. It's gonna be dope. I'm gonna like it's gonna be the best thing I read this year. And it was so bad. A lot of people like it. Don't get me wrong. I am genuinely glad people like it, but it was just fucking silly. Uh, like you can only bleed. There, there's just like there's blood magic, and they just hemorrhage constantly. Yeah. And like I, I don't know. Like in my rant, I did get a bit drunk, so by the end of it, I was just like <laughs> going like, I feel bad for the poor servants. Like they <laughs> can't keep that castle clean. They hemorrhage everywhere. I hope they just oh. give everybody orange juice and cookies because like there's no way to like you know. Conquer the blood loss. Like, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, so, I forget where I was going with that comment, but <laughs> so Delaney, when she commented, she was the one that left the the cyborg comment. She said, "Oh, lol, that's Naomi Lucas. Never mind. She's the one with the the character with the guns tattooed on his hips." Oh, sorry. Wait, that was a different book then. No, it was way. one. Like it was her book. I didn't know it was her book. Apparently, it's that one. Uh, I don't know, I just, I couldn't with that book. I just, like, inanimate object fucking just gets, I don't know, whatever. That's not. Yeah, well, I mean, he could he could have put something different in there. That's not sexy to me. I don't, I can't. Plus, I'm like, I hope you didn't just fire that thing, because it's going to be hot, and then I'm going to kick you in the face. That's not cute. That's not <laughs> cute in a little bit. I yeah. did read this one book. Um, it's, like, one of the filthiest things I've ever read. It was called The Red by Tiffany Wrights. Mm -hmm. Like, they put too many things inside of her body. Uh oh. Like, too many things. Like, things like you, you shouldn't be putting those in there. So, like, I don't think it would fit. A specific, <laughs> like, kink that has, like, a huge fucking group of people. Cause when I'm, like, trying to find other, like, odd tropes or I found an odd trope and I research it and go to Reddit because on Reddit, I swear to God, there's a subreddit for like fucking everything. And that's like an actual like thing. I can't remember what it's called. But it's like a subset of the BDSM community where they just literally everybody just like fucks each other with inanimate objects. That's oh. it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they didn't even really talk about that. It was just all like weird kink. And I think she was fucking a ghost at one point. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of ghost fucking in this live show. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, um, she owns a museum or like a gallery and the paintings kind of come to life and she gets put in them and she fucks in these paintings. Oh, Jesus. Wait, what book is this? The Red by Tiffany Wrights. I have to look into that. That sounds weird enough that just like I need to... I got an e-galley of it and I was like, oh, it should be kind of cool. It's like, you know, she owns a gallery and then there's like a mysterious guy and then she's, I knew it was going to be smutty, but I was just like, I didn't know it was going to be that smutty. <laughs> like, he, like there's, there's weird stuff. Like you, I can only read about so many like times. <gasps> Sorry, my boyfriend has donuts. Um, <laughs> I'm so like, many donut. times that we can get fisted before I'm just like, I can't with you anymore. <laughs> 
Sorry, dear. I'm talking about fisting. <laughs> <laughs> is this wait? Oh shit, my thing is my Does this look like that series? Um, that's a different series yeah. by her. But it's this author. Yeah, I can totally find it then. It is like the filthiest thing I've ever read. It has like four point eight one stars on Goodreads. I don't trust mm-hmm. Goodreads anymore. Y'all be fucking lying to my ass on Goodreads. Yeah, people don't know how to rate things. They this don't. is it. Hold on. They don't, but I think a lot of it, like romance, is harder than this. Everything. Is the red? Okay. Like it looks I smutty, right? I'm and it looks like a painting. So I'm like, oh, it's gonna be like art smut. And I'm like, they they this put like too many things in her body. Hold on, I I I. Wrote a review. I can just do it. Goodreads, I think, is good for other books, but for romance, Goodreads is hard because I feel like a lot of people just like like the smutty aspect of it, so they just give it five stars, and then you read the book, and it's like, but I still want actual like book. <laughs> right. Okay. So the red is actually a story about a woman becoming a prostitute, albeit a classy one. That's what I wrote in my review. I forgot it was. He was just basically like, I'll pay you to bang me, and then you can keep your gallery open. So it was like, she's becoming a prostitute. Jeez. And then like, um, basically, um, I'll just read it, okay. Mona is a t- broke 25 year old art gallery owner. Mind you, 25 art gallery owner. Bullshit. <laughs> um, no wonder she's broke. It was her mother's dying wish that she keep the gallery open. However, she's dead broke and there isn't just isn't any way for her to keep the gallery. Enter Malcolm, a handsome stranger who offers to help her out of her predicament by giving her rare art in exchange for one night a month. During said night, he basically has carte blanche with her body. What follows is a series of sexual encounters based on famous paintings. There's always a dreamlike element to the scenarios and the events that occur could not happen in real life. This is where the paranormal elements come into with full details, blah, blah, blah. So I, I wasn't sure if this was supposed to be like paranormal romance or not, because it's like, she's fucking in paintings. And then like, I'll just put it plainly, the red was incredibly filthy. Like I did not expect there to be the level of smut that existed here. I like, I don't want to give away so many spoilers, hold on. Um. Okay, so in the first sex scene, can I like say something that happens in the first sex scene? Everyone's cool with like a little bit of spoilers? Heck yes. So in the first sex scene, Malcolm fucks Mona with a glass water bottle. Jesus. (laughs) Things, oh, that's the first scene. The first. (laughs) They just went for it. Okay. Things only get progressively dirtier from there. There are also orgies, fisting, breastfeeding. Oh yeah, she breastfed him at one point. (laughs) And a threesome with questionable participants. (laughs) In the threesome, Malcolm and his grandson, Spencer, both fuck Mona simultaneously. No, that's just fucking weird. Why are we- I mean, technically they weren't fucking each other, but still their balls must have been touching. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot I wrote that in my review. I'm sorry, I forgot like what happened to this book until I'm reading my review. (laughs) (laughs) Their balls must have been touching. (laughs) I'm trying to figure out the who was like, Grandpa, like, let's go bang this guy. He's like a ghost who was in a painting, and then, like, he's, like, the grandfather, and then the grandson is alive in Mona's age-ish. Yeah. It makes no sense. And he's, like, a non-spoiler way to describe the smut in the red is to say Mona is penetrated by a multitude of people and objects. <laughs> 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 that was, like, I wrote, like, this long review about it. I'm like, is this filthy? <laughs> oh, God. I, I forgot some of this filth in it until I reread my review. But yeah, it, it's like the filthiest thing I've ever read in my life. That is like hilarious, but also like scary. Like the breastfeeding part. And I'm like, mm, I forgot about that. And then I'm like, oh yeah, she did breastfeed him at one point. Oh, that reminds me of when I tried to start watching Game of Thrones. I think in like episode five, they go visit her sister. And I was like, why is this like nine-year-old kid being breastfed? And I, I, I haven't watched past that point because I was just like... Yeah, that, that nine-year-old breastfeeding? Yeah. I was just like, okay. I don't know if I'm ready for this right now. <laughs> We've had such a long video and it's gone so off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Are people still actually watching this right now? People might still be watching. I'm sorry. 25 what? people. Yeah, people are less fewer people are watching because we're talking about gross stuff. But... <laughs> 
anyway, um, should we start wrapping up or should we just keep going? Because I think we've been talking for like two hours. <laughs> Where has it been? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's 11 o'clock. Holy fuck. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyway, so final thoughts on Guilty Pleasures. It was fun, albeit very 90s. Yeah. Um, I think it's a fairly good start of a series. Like, it would make me want to read the second book. I don't know if I will, but it was, like, it's a good start of a series. I enjoyed it. Four out of five stars. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm torn. I really want to read the second book, but I just low-key, I'm not even going to lie, I just want to skip to the smutty parts and see how wild she gets, because this lady's a trip. Yeah, me too. Like, I just want to see the smutty parts. Like... <laughs> One of the comments, like, said, um, I think it was Shauna that said she joined, like, she got into a polyamorous relationship, like, after writing it for these books, like, after research, I guess. So, like, I'm, I'm really curious. Yeah. Like, where this book goes. This lady yeah. is off the chain. <laughs> Brandy, final yeah. thoughts? I enjoyed it. Gave it 3.5. I might continue on if my library has an audiobook for the second one, because it's entertaining, so. Okay. It was like the super dramatic ending that I took a picture of. So I thought it was funny. It wasn't like nothing dramatic happened. It was just like this very like '90s. Like I could just like hear like this '90s character voice like narrating it. Like at the end, like as the screen goes black and the show goes off, where she's just like, um, "I know who I am and what I am. I am the executioner, and I don't date vampires. I kill them." I just picture XO like <laughs> XO gossip girl. It makes like the, like, the X Men theme song starts playing. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Like, I don't think it was meant to be. I don't know. It's just, it's just hilarious. So I, I'm curious to read. Like, I want to just like skim the last books for like style purposes and see if any of that like leveled out. But also, just like want to skip to the smut. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so book for June: Star Fever by Karen Monning. Um, Faye, Irish, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm probably going to start reading it maybe, not next week, maybe the week after. Yeah, that one's a chunker, so I'm going to try to be really diligent about taking notes while I read that one, because I don't yeah. think I'm going to be able to wait until, like, the day before and read it <laughs> like I did this time. Yeah, I, th I think I'm going to, like, try to get this on audio, because of all the, like, the weird names. I want someone to pronounce them for me. Yeah. So, excited for that one. And then July, we pick some books, sort of. We had some ideas. Yeah. And then... And you, oh, go ahead. you guys can always join the Goodreads page because we do all the votes. And yes. We have Twitter and Goodreads. Twitter is at Bookspear. And it's like really coming down right now. Uh-oh. Signal's going out, boo. Yeah. Yeah. My internet sucks. People <laughs> will probably up playing Xbox, so... Damn kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Don't know if you can I hear this to see, um, The Sun is also a star, but I went to see um, Everything Everything when it came out, and I swear to God, it was like a theater full of preteens, and I couldn't watch the movies every time that little cute-ass boy came on screen. They were like, yeah! I know, they scream. And then I felt so old, so I was like, <laughs> damn, kids. I was like, ooh, shit, wait a minute. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so next book is picked. We are getting together. With, I'm also working on like making a giant list of books like we can pick from, and because this like constant like last minute, I, I suck at it, and I really like need to be better prepared. So I'm trying to get together a list of like paranormal romance books, both that I've read and I haven't read, so we at least have somewhere like a Google or doc thing. Yeah, yeah. But I'll give you some. Problem is that I have so fucking many. Like my shelves, my paranormal shelf is double stacked, like front yeah. and back. I don't know. I picked July's and August for, for me because I'm just <laughs> I'm a psycho. And I've already picked them. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing to be prepared. I think I'm waiting to see if something good like comes out, but I I have not been on top of my arcs at all. Like I still have all of the arcs I was supposed to read in like April still sitting right here looking at me. I don't even know what's coming out anymore. I was supposed to like that planner that I had. I was supposed to film a plan with me and I was supposed to have like a page that showed all of the books that it was coming out in a year so that I could be better prepared. Did I get it like together? Get yeah. It together. The struggle, man. I didn't have like <laughs> a foot and had all kind of fucked up allergic reactions. I tell you how my truck broke down. So it wouldn't start the other day. The truck is only a 2016. It's just every time I get an American car, it just scraps it on me. Well, my luck, I don't know what, I swear to God, 
I had to have been Hitler in another life. Like, I need to see if we got the same birthday. It's like a gypsy cursed you. Something. And I didn't do anything that I know of. <laughs> I mean, I might have. Who knows? What it is. <laughs> but I, I swear, I, I did something I, in another life. I was somebody fucked up. I don't know what the hell, but just everything has been falling the fuck apart. Yeah. So I'm going to try to get that list together and see if I can at least pick something cool. Because I think this last month I was just like, oh, let's just throw this book in here because I don't know anything else. And yeah. It worked out. It's fine. All right, guys. This has been a very long chat. Yeah. But fun. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I think the next one, we haven't picked a date yet, but I think the next one, Amanda, is going to be your channel, right? Yeah. It'll be in July on my channel. July is my birthday month. Yay, I'll be 27. When's your birthday? The 24th. July 24th. Okay. I need to remember that. I'm going to write it down. Good. Uh, it's okay. Um, okay. So it'll probably, I don't know. Should we do a birthday show? That'd be weird. No, I don't want to ruin your birthday. Well, I wouldn't ruin your birthday. I just want to take up time on your birthday. It's on a weekday anyway. So. Oh, so never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll work it out. We'll work it out. We'll do something like special. Okay, guys. All right. Thanks for watching, people. We're going to get the hell out of here. It's been super, like, two hours and 50 minutes because we have no chill. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.